So about two months back, Aaron Snyder hit the big 4-0, and I'm well on my way to 43. We're not exactly old, but we're not spring chickens either. We're fit for two older guys. In fact, we're in better shape now than we were in our early 30s, and we're pretty happy about that. But Father Time isn't backing down, and it's more important than ever to live well, both physically and emotionally. And that's why I'm pleased to have Dr. Hillary Lampers and my good buddy Ryan Lampers, a.k.a. Donnie Vincent Lampers, on today's episode of Gritty Bowman. Ryan is an absolute stud when it comes to bow hunting public lands, and his wife Hillary is a doctor, but not your regular, everyday, run-of-the-mill doctor that I generally mistrust, except in the case of dire emergencies. Hillary's the kind of doctor that actually treats root causes of physical distress, instead of simply prescribing drugs to treat symptoms. Hillary and Ryan started a podcast this past December called Hunt Harvest Health, and I'm so glad they did. I've been listening to their podcasts on backcountry meal prep, gardening, testosterone, cortisol, and other hormones, gut health, and the second brain, hunting, and more. If you've got little kids around while you're listening to this podcast, you may want to revisit this episode when they're not around. This is a talk about health. It's not time to be squeamish. We talk about things like poop, S-E-X, how to increase testosterone, love languages, etc. You've been warned. Some of you may be thinking that this health stuff is boring or that this medical talk is way too complex, but it's really not, and I truly believe it is life-changing information. So I encourage you to buck up and take notes. And when you're done with this podcast, go subscribe to the Hunt Harvest Health Podcast and continue learning how to feed your temple of power. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Bowman Podcast. We're here in Missoula, Missoula, Montana, at the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers uh, Rendezvous 2017, because this podcast may not air for quite a long time. No, <laughs> we, we do have, I do have people, I do have people asking show. me, like, when is that show going to go up? We recorded it like two months ago. Yeah. Yeah. We got a few uh, in the can from this from all these shows this year. And so actually here I try to cut back a little bit, but I am here with, uh, Donnie Vincent Lampers Jr. <laughs> no. uh, Ryan Lampers, my good friend, Ryan Lampers and his wife, uh, Hillary Lampers. Uh, I notice he just calls you Hill. Yeah. Everybody calls me Hill or doc. Doc. Yeah. Sometimes I, I doc. even want to call you doc too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And uh, I got that I nickname. <laughs> I got that nickname from a business I was involved with, an, a, an older guy that brought me in as a consultant mm -hmm. uh, on a project in the community we worked on. And he's like, "We're just going to call you Doc." And to me, Doc sounds like so. My great grandfather was a chiropractor in uh -huh. Texas in like the early 1900s, yeah. and he died when I was like 13. But we only called him Doc. And so when people call me Doc, I have the vision of my great-grandfather. So it's a little weird for me. But after they started calling me Doc, it's just everybody started calling me that. So I think I of it as a small now. town, like a small country town yeah. with the country doctor. And everybody just calls him Doc, yeah. right? Yeah, that's I like it. what it is. I think it's like an earned respect title to have. Well, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I got to be called something. Like, oh, I said, <laughs> it could be worse than <laughs> Put my time I mean, in, you know? Like, come on. <laughs> my nickname for her before, like, yeah. I don't know when I dropped oh, the, the bub, but it's always been bub. I don't know. Bub? He bub. used to call wow. me bubba. That's, bubba. Rom that's romantic right Do there. Do I look like a bubba to you? <laughs> like Forrest think, Gump. Bubba Forrest Gump. I think Gump. that started in Alaska, and it just, I mean... Yeah, over time yeah. it was just. Bub. Yeah, you guys Every met time in I Alaska. Phone, I was like, "Hey, bub." Well, you guys are running. You guys started the. Uh, so, for people who don't know, uh, Ryan did uh, train to hunt this last year. Yeah. And you were on an earlier podcast that people should go check out if they haven't, if they if they haven't caught that one. Uh, Ryan is a very uh, accomplished hunter, uh, archery hunter. He's killed a lot of big bucks, big bulls, and in country and public land in areas that notoriously are known for not having those kind of animals, but Ryan seems to find them. And uh, you shot a monster mule deer this year in Montana. Yeah. Um, so Ryan is one of those guys that can, can get it done and, and has a, a, a vast, uh, you know, 
skill set in public land hunting for for big animals. Yeah, and a little bit about that hunt real quick mm-hmm. is, um, you know, me and my buddy Jeff Lusk, we, we kind of before this hunt, we had planned it out. He wanted to go and, and check yeah. it out. It was kind of one of those things, you know, public land, which is why we're all over here right now. Public land is it was a hot topic, right? Yep. We all like, you know, talking about it and this and that. And me and Jeff thought, wouldn't it be cool is if, you know, I've hunted Montana before. Wouldn't it be cool if we just picked a new spot, a piece of public land? Let's pick some yellow on a map and check that out and see if we can pull a big buck off of that property. And that's what we did. We hit, you know, a couple spots in between, but at that third spot we found, it was just, we checked it out on a map. It was just completely open for anybody to go hunt. Um, and just a piece of public land that anybody had access to. And we were able to go out there and make it happen with a pretty nice buck. I was pretty happy with that buck at the end there. in Montana, Dude, so. it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I saw that and I was like, he does was it again. So How did he do it again? Now, wasn't it like a last day thing or... No, but it was uh, it was our third spot, so mm-hmm. we kind of struck out. Now the first two spot which spots we picked for public land were good. We were seeing bucks, um, just not that smoker buck that we were really looking for. We really wanted to find a big mature buck. So he saw lots of bucks I would have shot, but just uh, not any bucks he would shoot. Well, we were being a little. <laughs> we picky, have a admit, mule but. deer hanging on our wall. <laughs> that's a Montana mule deer that took him ten days to track. <laughs> Isn't that the one uh, with yeah, the w- big old thing? That <laughs> I came home thing. from work one night and walked around the corner, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and this thing is. was just. <laughs> well, yeah, it, that, um, yeah he, that he that was a wait. that was a buck that I I one of those deals where I saw it first day. Mm-hmm. Really ha- came close to getting him that first day. It didn't happen. A bunch of weather came in, and um, yeah, it took a lot of days before I caught that buck. Yeah, caught back up to him. Found some does, stuck with him, and ended up getting. Uh, getting a shot at that buck and, and got him so that was the that buck that's on our wall but yeah montana's well, been pretty decent ryan um did train to hunt last year and never had done one before um you think you didn't you win one or well how'd you get it, oh i won an entry entry through you through Gertie Bowman and Jesse. You, Jesse you and gave Jesse, it away. Yeah, you yeah. got on Instagram and, and uh, saw my name on there, and you said, free entry to a Nevada train to hunt. That's I'd, right. I'd never even been to Nevada or done a train to hunt. <laughs> so I my how my, life has changed. Yeah. I called my wife, and I'm like, hey, guess what? You know, uh, I got this free entry. What do you think? It's like a week away. No time to train or anything. And uh, I was like, you're stupid if you don't go. Like. <laughs> Gr- Gritty Bowman gave you the free entry. Like you the need great to go. Gritty Bowman <laughs> yeah, right. gave you I was at a baseball game, my nephew's baseball game, and he's like, "So I kind of got this thing to go to this thing, but it's like in two weeks." What's it's funny like, is this is like such Nevada. a. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you're gonna do it, right?" And he's like, "Well, I don't know. It's it's only two weeks of training." I'm so shut up, just go. <laughs> well, like, to be honest, I was nervous. I was yeah, you know, I, yeah. I've seen what Train to Hunt is, and I, I'd known Kenton from a while back. And I knew how hard it was, and yeah. I hadn't trained for this. And, and so, yeah, going driving down two states south and just going and showing up to some train-to-hunt event was pretty nerve-wracking for me. Yeah, I don't but, blame you, dude. I'd be nervous, too. Yeah, but I'm it like, worked out awesome. Um, and I've said this before. I got down there and just started talking to folks, and uh, you know, I was by myself. I had to leave the girls back home. But, um, yeah, I just ran into some cool people, met Dave Baronio down there, um, just a super motivating guy. Mm-hmm. Um, we had the 3D shoot right away, and lo and behold, I ended up um, taking the, the one <laughs> the one spot on the, on the 3D shoot, and I shot one point better than Dave, and so that shocked me. And um, and so I think I called her and was like, "Man, you know, it's pretty it's, good. It's it's cool down here, and I I might have a shot at getting a bronze. That's yeah, that's, that would be awesome. Yeah, then he came. Be, he he's kind of like uh how you were talking about today, like a friend of yours who has a hard time losing, but it's very competitive. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the one thing with Ryan is he's pretty unassuming mm-hmm. when you see him and he's pretty humble and quiet. He's an introvert. So he doesn't like that attention on him. Right. So the whole idea of going to this thing and meeting people he doesn't know and then and then having to perform and then maybe not winning. Right. That's like, you know, kind of his thing. But even to place... I mean, we've talked about this too. And our thing is like, he 
just he came back a different person. Yeah. What's it crazy was cool. is I don't know what happened there, like some bromance stuff going on, but <laughs> I Hillary, I was like, what's, what? What's interesting is you you're just like I don't know, sometimes <laughs> I wonder is it coincidence, right? It's 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 like we could have given that thing away to so many people and yeah. it lands on you yeah. randomly and then and then you go and it's just uh and and it, it it's totally changed our lives yeah. to be honest i mean really from that point i got heavily involved to train to hunt um i ended up getting podium on that one and that that got me to the next one mm -hmm. um me and Corey Miller ran the next one and yep. did okay in that. And There's a little YouTube video I did of <laughs> yeah, you and Corey, yeah, right. which is really, I it's think, very that fun was, to watch. I go back video. and watch it every it's now and then. It's on our website. <laughs> oh, is it? It's on the front page of our website if you go to it. It's yeah. a great video. That's cool. It, was, it showed how it you are and, and how you like to mess with folks. <laughs> I, I was glad you were. In their face. I did. I, I did. And I, I like to tease in a in a friendly way, but I, I like to do that and. You were a good sport about it the whole time. Well, and, I, and I'm a nervous guy, so you know you have first off <laughs> just a camera, and then you having it so close during a shot during a challenge. So yeah, I was pretty nervous about it, but somehow managed to keep all those arrows in the time. Oh, you did great, dude! <laughs> but, Impressive. I mean, but but since that, you know, mm -hmm. took on that challenge and then, man, I wanted to do it again. Uh, ended up going to Oregon, took the family down there. We did that one, and. Um, and then I got to meet, yeah. I mean, I I got to meet people in Washington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had two kids. It was kind of like I didn't really get to do a ton, but I got to observe. And then uh, Oregon just met more people. Yeah. And it just kind of opened my eyes, right? But it it really changed. I'm an extrovert. I don't have a problem being around people like you and me, like talking. I was yeah. Like, I think Brian has me talk beat on talking. <laughs> Dude, that's How what I do for possible? a living. <laughs> right. But uh, it, I've just watched Ryan in the last year just come out of like his shell that he's mm -hmm. been in. I've been with him 22 years. This year will be our 20th wedding anniversary as well in June. And I know you and your wife have your 20th this year, right? Yes. And I've just watched him like come out of this, um, his humble pie shell, I guess is what you can say in a good way where he's going, wow, there's actually people like me out yeah. here and uh and it can be family there's a lot of family values and smart people and then i came into it because i always i grew up in montana mm -hmm. my parents didn't hunt my stepdad did for a little bit when i was a teenager but he quit and i just always had a very different view of hunters the stereotypical hunter and that was kind of what i carried through so when I went to these things, I was like meeting people like you and you're taught, like you read books. I'm like, dude, this guy like reads books. There's a hunter that reads a book. Because <laughs> Ryan doesn't really, he's not, he loves research right. and stuff, but he's not. I'm like, you need to read the four hour work week. He's like, oh my gosh, what is this? Sure, I'll read it. And he's like, <laughs> right? Right. And I, but I started going, well, there's like really actually smart, educated, kind, um, family oriented people. They're working hard. They're healthy. They they look healthy. They um, and so that just really changed, really our relationship around hunting. Like it was. Yeah, kind of kind of put a focus on it's crazy <laughs> where we want to kind of focus our lives, and that's kind of what we've done since then. Is um, you know since that point, since we both got to go and experience the family of trained to hunt and mm -hmm. talk to folks, and and she got her world opened up to how hunters are. And, um, all the folks behind the scenes and the families behind them and just so much support. And, um, yeah, it just changed us. Like we see such great people and such great things happening. A lot of it's a product of what you're doing as well. You know, people want to be better and whether yeah. that's through education, through training, Work, business, through nutrition, life. anything, yeah. business, life, a lot of, you know, a lot of your episodes kind of cover all those things. Well, I noticed great. that, uh, I felt sort of like a charlatan cause <clears throat> I'm, telling people about like for example the four hour work, work week or or something else that changed me that i read or heard about and i'm like there's a ton of other guys like even the guy who wrote the book who's doing a podcast that people can Paris, tune sure. into right so i'm like i'm just regurgitating stuff i've heard from other people and giving it to this community but i realized at some point that that we all do that even yeah. tim's doing that yeah. like yeah. and it it provides a service to that 
to that community, like sharing what you know mm -hmm. is really beneficial to, to a lot of people. Now there might be people who know more than you and that's great. There but will there's always a be lot, somebody who knows yeah, more than you. But there's but. a lot of people who, who are, who don't know as much as you in this particular field or area. And so you can share that yeah. information and it's what I learned about medicine being in medicine is that the world now, especially with the internet and the way people can just have so much information that they didn't have before at their yeah. fingertips is, is that it, especially like in my world in the health realm of, you know, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. it's very saturated and there, but there's people out there, you know, I, uh, 15 years ago or whatever it was, 17 years ago when I d decided to go back to school there wasn't this option. Like I, I, I was a massage therapist and I got a nutrition degree, but there wasn't this thing like you go online and you create this business and start a YouTube channel and just start talking about nutrition <laughs> to people because you don't have any like degree. Like right. who's going to listen to you? So I go through this expensive <laughs> education. I pay a quarter of a million dollars to get it. Um, I almost get divorced from him multiple times. We have like massive stress in our life. We have financial stress, True. all this stuff. Yeah. Now I'm 10 years into private practice and I go, I watch if people that I know and that I would go to a conference and they will be speaking there. They have no degree. They have nothing. They're like, oh, I solved my hypothyroid problem, wrote a book. Now I have an online, like Tim Ferriss. Like I just taught myself this thing and now I'm an expert and they're making like tons of money. They love what they're mm -hmm. doing and people are looking at them. They're looking up to them. So here's the deal. Like there's always going to be somebody smarter than you who knows more than you, but that doesn't mean what you have to share is that the people who trust you, they're going to want to listen to you more than they're going to want to listen to somebody like me. They don't know who's like, oh, I'm so smart and I have this degree and I have this stuff. So like if my daughter were to say to me, mom, is it really important that I go through all this stress, all this school, all this money to be college educated, having been through it, yeah. I would say if it's your passion and if it's like you see at the end of that long, dark tunnel, which a lot of times these long education things are, yeah. is that if there's something there that you're passionate about. And if that means you never go to college because you're doing something you're passionate about and in this day and age... You can make a life without having to go through all that traditional stress, which we put on our children. Like you have to go to college. Yeah. You have to be this way. You have to be this. And I get it because you want to be educated, but the world is so different now. So for me, I'm more about, it was my passion. Mm -hmm. I was dedicated and I'm very goal oriented. So I did that because at the time, I didn't really felt like I had a choice, like to do what I wanted to do in medicine. Yeah. I had to have a professional yeah, yeah, back license. Then, right. And even to do what I do now in my actual private practice, I do need a medical license. So I do procedures and stuff that you can't just learn online and go into practice. Right. Do you? You'll like, mm -hmm. you know, we get, get thrown sued. in jail. Yeah. So um, <laughs> go to it, jail. Go to jail. So uh, it's when I do need that. But when I see what's happening now, like with what you're sharing, and I tell mm -hmm. it, people will be like, oh, you're a doctor. Oh, I'm stupid. And I'm like, dude, like, believe me, I don't have, I took my board exams 10 years ago. If I had to take them today, I'd flunk them. <laughs> right. Because there's so much information they throw at you and they just like expect you to remember this. You don't remember it. You learn it. You, re, you, you take a test and you dump it out of your head. Yeah. Unless it's the things you're passionate about. So for me, I love to talk about certain things. <laughs> there's other things people ask me. I'm like, Mm, go see this person. Yeah. I don't do primary care. I don't want to see you for your cold, your flu. Your, I don't care about that. You know, So you learn that in medicine. But I would say you don't have to have these expensive educations and feel like you need that to be important. Right. I think it's your passion, how you come across to people, mm -hmm. and really your talent of selling yourself. I yeah. mean, that's the biggest thing, and that's what we worked on with Ryan, is Ryan would rather you never know who he was. And I'm like, I know quite a few people like that. Like you need to Aaron know. Snyder. People need to know who you are. It's like very comfortable. I'm I'm quite good at <laughs> getting those guys and forcing them into Who's the limelight. That guy in the corner over there, not <laughs> right. talking. Who's that guy? He's got something. I know he does. <laughs> well, and and that's you know what I think it, that's worked so well in the podcast world and what you've done and mm -hmm. which I think is brilliant is like you said you've taken information that's already out there. But you're feeding it to a group of people that need the information or want to learn the information. They may not listen to Tim Ferriss. They may not even know what the information is that they want. They listen to they guys listen like to you, you 
and you, you know, with having Aaron Schneider on, you know, mm-hmm. really good hunter, you've got these guys buying in yeah. for good reason. Yeah. You guys have so much good information. You've gained their trust. So now you're introducing all these other things that's kind of opening the eyes to all these other, fo- all these other uh, issues in the world, public lands, all these things that mm-hmm. maybe a lot of us wouldn't have been thinking about. And a lot of stuff I didn't think about or know about. Right. I learned a lot from visiting with people like you guys that I've met. And it's neat to have a platform now where I can introduce more people to really useful and life-changing at times information. Um, You guys started a podcast called Hunt Harvest Health. Mm -hmm. When did you guys start that? We launched it December 24th. We launched our first fight up five episodes. Dude, Christmas Eve, huh? Yeah. That was... uh, So I have listened to probably two-thirds of all, all all the episodes okay. and um and really really i'm geeking out on it because you know <laughs> uh, so for people who don't know uh tell them really quick quickly what is hunt harvest health all right so hunt harvest health is it's a it's a combination because obviously she's a doctor and i'm a hunter yes so we thought we would kind of combine our stories and i guess our knowledge of what we each know she's really good in nutrition so we're Mm -hmm. kind of putting that out there you know things that we feel help people with their training nutrition overall health um she's just got a lot in her head where she can kind of put that out there my part i love to talk hunting yeah i will i'd be more than happy to talk hunting stories now what's gardening and gardening gardening is my thing i love food prep um you know growing my food harvesting my food Mm -hmm. Killing my food, you name it. I, everything food related, I love it. Canning, yep, all these things, and it's fascinating how when we started this, I had no idea, you know, if people would be interested in that. Yep. I mean, who wants to hear about canning and gardening and growing? <laughs> right, it's like processing food. You you think almost not very many, like nobody. Yeah, I like, just figured I'm I'm a nerd with that <laughs> stuff. I can geek out over yeah, it, and there's yeah. a, maybe a few close friends that, that like it, but the majority of folks don't. But surprisingly. It's interesting how people have kind of bought in to mm-hmm. a lot of that. Um, they've seen some of the things that, that we've done just in our life, um, you know, some of the trial and error things that we've done with food, uh-huh. um, with the garden. We haven't really done a whole lot of the canning, but that's on it's the docket It's not canning for the season right now, yeah, so we it's kind of not worth it for us right. to show people right now. They'd be like, well, I can't go in my garden and pick anything. Right. It's kind of right. like life hacks that we've done with our, with our life. Um, being self-sufficient with our food and all these different things. And, you know, gut health, nutrition, um, things that are going to help you. It's a lifestyle. We just want to share our lifestyle because we've done this for 20 years and we've trial and error. And we're we're not coming at it like, we know all this stuff, but we're coming at it and saying, listen, you can like know this stuff and do this stuff. You you already kill healthy meats. Like you bring that home to your family. Why are you not doing the rest of it healthy because it's like you and yeah. I talked about vegetables, you know, don't eat a bunch of meat if you're not going to eat a bunch of vegetables. So that's good for you. something I want to talk to you about was, yeah. um, in, you know, on your podcast, as I'm listening to it, you guys are really diving into <clears throat> some interesting topics on a fairly regular basis. So you've uh, discussed gut health mm-hmm. and why that matters and, and, and what the gut does and how it works and Frankly, most people I know have no idea about how the body works in the gut. And and I and I've heard from a number of different specialists in the last few years, like we've learned more about the gut in like the last year than we have in the last fifty years. Right. Right. Like it's just changing every day. There's so much information around this space. And it's deep it's so critical to our overall health. And we've done so much damage to it because of the the way this food system is in the United States and how we tend to eat and all the stuff, stress, drugs, medications. It's it's something that most people overlook. I mean, who wants to think about their gut? And, 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 and dude, I got away with a lot of that too when I was younger. Uh, but as I'm getting older, um, yeah, I get frustrated with some of my own problems and I feel like I'm a pretty healthy dude and, and I try to eat right. Um, and so you had a doctor on, Dr. Jillian. Yeah, Tita. Girl, she's a, one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. We went to medical school together, and she lives in North Carolina. She's she an absolute expert at 
That's she's written books and stuff, yeah. And yeah. so she is. She talked about gut health yeah. and with you on the podcast, mm-hmm. and I highly encourage people to go check that out because it's really, really good information. Yeah. Um, and so one of the one of the things uh, that you know you spoke about on the podcast, as I understood, and I'm going to dumb it down for people that are listening, right? That's good. Ryan always tells me, <laughs> "Dumb it down, man. Get down there. <laughs> Quit me. flying over people's <laughs> heads." Right. So. No, that's uh, what I said. So, you know, our gut is where when we eat food, whatever it might be, um, you, I like the story you were t- talking about, Ryan, because you're, you're telling me that Ryan eats really well and has done things. And you're testing, you're testing Brian, you're getting Brian's blood work done. And you're looking at certain markers and you're seeing what his hormone levels are, how his testosterone is, um, and, and other, other things to see how healthy Ryan is. And you're finding out that he's not as... He's not as good as he should be. Right. Yep. And that, um, and it sounded like part of the reason for that was not that he wasn't eating the right foods per se, but he wasn't absorbing the nutrients from those foods. Right. So now, it, I was eating, I mean, we've always ate incredibly healthy. Yeah. So certain, you know, I fish a lot. I hunt a lot. So obviously the meat is there. The protein is there. The fats are there with everything that we take in. The salads, you know, we eat a lot of greens. And, um, yeah, I hit a point where we did some tests just to figure things out, you know, what was going on. And, and I realized, man, I'm not as healthy as I thought I was because my test came back and I wasn't absorbing proteins. I was highly deficient in proteins, fats, all these things that I'm actually taking in more Mm -hmm. of. And, um, that was an eye opener. It's like all the foods I'd been eating over who knows how long were wasted. I I could have been eating cardboard. Right. So. So, you know, she could probably go into, you know, why well, that is and how that the happened. The interesting thing is that people, when they think about, they hear the gut, it's, it's like there's, there's a lot of processes that go on, but there's both digestion and absorption. And those are two different functions and then elimination. So mm-hmm. when you eat it, it goes into your stomach and it has to be broken down. It starts in your mouth. The minute you put it in your mouth, you start breaking carbohydrates down yep. with your saliva. It uh-huh. goes down your esophagus, it hits your stomach acid. Hydrochloric acid starts breaking proteins mm-hmm. down, carbohydrate, blah, blah, blah. It shoots into your, your small intestine goes, okay, here's a bunch of food that's going to come. And your pancreas starts shooting a bunch of digestive enzymes. It hits your intestines. It breaks it down a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And now you have these little tiny particles or fat molecules that your bile is secreted from your gallbladder. Again, like all these organs that yeah, you yeah. have that people are like, oh, you don't need your gallbladder. Oh, now, <laughs> now, there are some people that like they have gallbladder problems and... Their life is way better when they get it out. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, there's all these organs have functions. So And they're they, contributing yeah. to this process. So you have di- digestion, which is basically breaking big things into little things. Yep. For absorption. Then it For gets nutrition. into your small intestine mm-hmm. and it has to be absorbed. Mm-hmm. And so that is going to depend on the quality of your gut lining. And your gut lining has these really tight junctions and little hairs like cilia and they clean stuff up and and then they have receptors that only allow certain things through and that's why fats have to be attached to a bile so that they can get through. The problem is most people from years of poor food. Antibiotics. Antibiotics probably from a very young age, especially mm-hmm. if they had like chronic ear, ear infections, infections yeah. children, you know, being sick, autoimmune diseases, like all this stuff. Um, they just slowly destroy the gut lining. And not only do they destroy the gut lining, they, they destroy their hydrochloric acid production in their stomach. Their pancreas is overworked and not secreting enough digestive enzymes. So they just don't break stuff down. Now they have this leaky border of their intestines and all, and then their enzymes aren't breaking everything down. So it's like big proteins coming into your blood and stuff. So, so which, like they call that leaky gut, like yeah, and the conventional medical model... That, that's where the, it was supposed to break it down into that small... You don't want to absorb healthy big piece, proteins. That's but instead it didn't break it down and now it's slipping through. And yeah. now it's got this thing that's like the enemy mm-hmm. uh, at the gates. It so, pumps through and now... So now you What have, does the body do when that happens? Yeah, so your most of your immune system, mm-hmm. which your wife went through cancer, so you've learned all about the immune system yep. and how important it is. Most all of it is in your gut. Isn't it 80% yeah. comes from your gut? So what happens is here, now, now you, have some, you have somebody who's got leaky gut, 
got all these big proteins going in. Now your immune system's like, what the heck? Like, and, and I these don't are, want all this if stuff. You, if, if you, I picture it kind of like an, a screen. Right, and this screen, yeah, your gut's like a screen, screen, and it only lets certain size molecules come out. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like now it's gone from a screen to like a fishing net. Like the holes just got too big, yeah. it got too weak, and now you got big chunks going through the screen that were never meant to go through the screen. So here's the other thing, and the organ and, and when those get into your body, well, then then they do what's called the first bypass, which is they go through the liver. So the liver is an amazing organ because it's, it's going to filter everything you put into your body, even the air you breathe. Like, so that stuff goes into your bloodstream, your blood goes through your liver, mm -hmm. and your liver cells are all these, like, you know your screen in the bottom of your sink? Yeah. That all the food gets right. stuck. <laughs> and yeah. you got, if you don't take that food out, your sink won't drain, right? Right. That's what like hepatocytes, which are liver cells, that's what they're like. So they're constantly screaming out, screening out the crud. And then the blood that comes out that's going to go to now your periphery and go to your organs and is going to feed your skin and your Provide hair nutrition and everything. to nutrition the body. Nutrition to your cells is cleaned up a little bit. So the, the big piece of this is if you, are ha if you have an overindulgent lifestyle, if you're eating poor food, if you're drinking too much alcohol, if you're... Um, taking too many drugs, like uh, recreational or pharmaceutical drugs, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. all of that has to go through detoxification in the liver. And the liver starts to get congested and like, what the, I can't keep up with all this. So then these bigger molecules are kind of, they're either getting stuck in the liver, which is congesting the liver, or they're going into the bloodstream because the liver is just like, Pfft. I'm done. And, and so now you have, and then when you talk about immunity, now your body goes, I don't know what this is. So it tries to send something to attack. And we are seeing epic proportions of autoimmune disease. Right. Each year in children, you know, like type type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. They don't know why it happens. It, just it, and, the and pancreas, just that your immune system kills your own beta cells. That's Bam. what I was going to say. What's an autoimmune disease? Some people don't know what that means. Your body attacks yourself. It, your immune system job is to attack attack foreign objects. It's like, okay, you got it common cold. Yep. Most people think they're getting the symptoms of a cold because it's the virus. Actually, it's not. Uh, you can be exposed to the virus, and if your immune system does not mount a response to that virus, you may not even know you have it. But most of us mount immune response, and so our white blood cells start shooting out hydrogen peroxide, all this to kill. It's like going to war to kill these viruses. Right. All of a sudden, you start swelling, Everything's uh, congested. You can't yeah. get it out. And that's our body Fighting trying it. to defend and seal ourselves up so we don't get more into us. And so there's kind of this like happy zone. Like everything in life, there's like this happy zone. If you don't get enough, you're over here. Like you can't, you can't mount an immune response. Your immune system's weak. This is the problem with like cancer. So you start giving chemo to people. Your immune just... system is like... I cannot keep up with all this. So you don't want them exposed to like a virus or colds or like she said, you know, you can't be because she can't even mount a immune response to that. And that could kill her. Mm -hmm. Right. Like let's, right. in the worst I've, case I've scenarios. Seen, I, we've seen it. Yes. Someone's receiving some kind of chemo treatment or something. They're so weak. They've taken to the point. The risk isn't actually the chemo. It's the virus or the cold. No. Yeah. And then you have the other spectrum on this happy side yeah. where now ev people are reacting to everything, including their own body. So now they start attacking themselves. So you get Hashimoto's thyroiditis, mm -hmm. you get type 1 diabetes, you get rheumatoid arthritis, you get lupus, you get Those are auto, all autoimmune, de autoimmune diseases conditions. where the body has kind yeah. of turned on itself. Yeah. yeah. So here you have this. And most people because of our lifestyles and our stress and everything, and maybe the drugs we have to take or, or whatever. So we're never, nobody's really ever in that happy zone very well. And the digestive system is the forefront. It's like, it's, it's like if you were on the front lines of the war, like that is the front line. And yeah. if you're, it's abused, it's like, it's like 
what's that movie, Braveheart, where he's, all, oh, he's running and all those warriors are standing in line. It's like there's only like five warriors now. And they're like, I don't know what you want me to do. And they're just getting decimated. Yes. The guys behind him are getting decimated because these yeah. guys, there's not enough of them. Front and that's kind of how the immune system works. And so your gut is like so important to your immune health. And... And then your detoxification process, your liver, and then how well you're able to eliminate waste. And when we eliminate, we don't only... El- Is that pooping? Pooping. Okay. Bowel movements, <laughs> if you want to call it. And uh, if you don't eliminate well, which a lot of people don't, uh, then you're going to recycle toxins, I- I read recycle some- estrogens, recycle hormones that you don't want to recycle. And then we start having hormonal issues and autoimmunity and stuff like that. So on the pooping thing, that's a big deal, okay? Pretty big. And, and I read this thing where people were saying that uh, laxatives are one of the highest prescribed, most money making. They are, yeah. Jillian drugs talked about in that the uni- in the yeah. w- in the United States. That and acid blockers. It's so, insane. So both ends are like a mess. The front end can't can't protect you from these. Pro- you know, hydrochloric acid doesn't just break your protein down. It protects you from viruses and bacteria. Kills you know, bacteria like when it goes when you travel your... to Mexico. Yeah. Why do some people survive Montezuma's Revenge and some people don't? Yeah. It's because your stomach acid is meant to it's toxic. break down it kills. that stuff. Yeah. It's acid. It's like kill it. Yeah. And break your proteins down into amino acids. But that's what it's for. Mm-hmm. And then on the so you can't do that because you don't have enough stomach acid. Because you're taking acid blockers. Mm -hmm. Because you had too much what you thought was acid. It was just a regurging up into your esophagus. So now you don't have enough acid. Then you can't get rid of it. Yeah. Because now you got to take a laxative. And so you're taking acid blockers and laxatives. And your body is just like, whatever. He's going to just force me to do what he wants. I'm not going to do it anymore. So you see people who have digestive stuff. And it's not just like they have digestive. Some people don't even know they have it. Like. Oh, my, my digestion's fine. It's like the first question you would ask a patient. So how's your digestion? Fine. Do you, ha- do you go to the bathroom every day? Well, yeah. Well, what does that mean? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I go almost every day. Well, almost every day? Or, or every- like every other day. And women especially, because women have more estrogens, which mm-hmm. is tougher on the system. Uh, there's women that will go like five days and not go. And they think that's normal. Normal. Right. I read a book on digestive health, wellness like 10 years ago, and they were talking about this sort of thing. And, yeah. and uh, it was still kind of, at the time, there wasn't as much information known about it. But in the book, they were they were doing statistics just on how the average American, how long, it, how many days they go. Transit time. Yeah. How many times they go. Uh, and it's like once every, the average was, I think, once every three days or two days, something like that. If you took the average of everybody in the United States, and then they were saying... They were taking uh, st- statistics on Aboriginal cultures, like in the Amazon, and those people were were defecating like three times a day, right. or, or at least once, but multiple times in the same day. And they were going, "Okay, this is probably normal over here," and that means you're you're holding on to your stool and your waist for three days, and you're initiating your immune system. You're recycling hormones, which is a massive problem right now, especially excess estrogens that women don't need as excess estrogen and men definitely so ex- don't explain need Explain that. So when estrogen. you have waste that just won't leave. So your colon, uh-huh. which is not your small intestine, your small intestine is where you absorb nutrients, nutrients and stuff. Large intestine is basically a holding tank where you also have your beneficial bacteria. They live in there. And then all this stuff that comes out of the small intestine feeds your bacteria, which is your microbiome, which everybody talks about, probiotics, you know, there's all these yeah, yeah. words you'll hear now. So that goes into the large intestine. But the large intestine's job is also to do things like reabsorb water. So if you're dehydrated, mm-hmm. you'll be constipated because your body says, I'm dehydrated, I need more water. And so whatever stool goes into the large intestine, the large intestine will start absorbing water from it. This is why soluble and insoluble fibers are really important because they mm-hmm. help push through. They help peristalsis, which is like pushing sausage through a tube. That's yeah. what it does. It's the nervous system stimulation to push it through. Then you have the second brain in your gut as well. So your mm-hmm. large intestine is very much controlled by this 
this, like Jillian said, you have a spinal cord. You have as mm-hmm. many nerves in your gut. You, it, your spinal cord would be like this big. You wouldn't be able to walk. Right. Like the, the gut that's is. That's how is, much nerve. That's why you call it the second brain yeah. because it makes a lot of decisions. So if that on, nervous system is dysfunctional or has had a lot of medications or things, laxatives for one, it's getting confused. And then all of a sudden, why does it need to work if you're taking a laxative? It doesn't need to do that. So it just stops doing mm-hmm. that action. And now you need a laxative and that stool's sitting in there. So this colon's reabsorbing the water. And also what it's doing is you eliminate hormones steroid hormones and, that you need to get rid of. You you don't want to recycle those things all the time. So, so the body is said it's just done starts with, resorbing it. So so with steroids or estrogen like you're describing, these hormones are, are produced by the body and now they're done. You have both what we call endogenous that you make and yeah. exogenous would be anything that you're exposed to in the environment or maybe you're taking like hormone replacement therapies right. or anything. Okay. So Understand yes. that. So you you have stuff that you your body just creates because of yeah. it you says this is so what we many need. Hormones but then so you're your exposed to it on the outside. So what's yeah. in your stool? What's in your stool is hormones, ex, uh, both all exogenous the and stuff. endogenous. Yes, both. Yes, because your liver is always making new hormone. Okay. So your liver is always trying to get rid of hormone. So it's saying, okay, we're done with this. You utilize it. And it's not just like, it's more complicated than that, but like you have many different types of estrogen, or at least women do. Men have estradiol and it gets broken down into byproducts. Testosterone gets broken down into byproducts. You need to eliminate those byproducts in urine and feces. Yeah. And if okay. you don't, so when it they sits reabsorb. In there, they reabsorb and that causes that's can bad cause because all kinds of problems you can have hormone ex- excess issues then your your um those are steroid hormones so they're hard on the I, liver I, I, they're a little more toxic like i have read that you know the longer that stool sits in there the more you you're exposed to that toxic waste that waste. should be out of your body but is now reabsorbing. It's, it's like it's toxic waste yep, is it what is. it is. Your body has to create your body does so many so biochemical sort of like, processes to create it to cr- get what it needs from it and then get, get rid, rid of, of it. the bad stuff. And so when it's stuck there, it's like And remember your liver's constantly <clears throat> filtering your blood and the mm-hmm. bad stuff that's in those things is going in. Back in again. Okay, so you want to get rid of that. That's really important. People who are constipated yeah. feel lousy crappy crappy and that's for sure that's no that's a no and it's no, true no and pun intended. you know what i think so many people are used to feeling crappy literally <laughs> they don't even know what that means so when i say how often do you go to the bathroom i don't know maybe every other day like yeah am i supposed to go to the bathroom every day it's like you know they're just used to feeling that crappy feeling and yeah. when they start going to the bathroom sometimes it's scary for people they get their digestion healthier. They heal their gut lining. They start taking probiotics. They eat more fiber. And uh, their second brain starts working a little bit better. And they start feeling so much better, but they start going to the bathroom all the time. They're like, what's wrong with me? Like, this can't be right. I can't be going to the bathroom three times a day. It's like, no, this is like normal. This is what you want. You know, if it's loose stool, obviously that's totally different, right? Yeah. Your body's trying to get rid of water because there's something it's trying to get rid of. So, Hillary, what should stool look like? <laughs> well, there's lots it's of different the question opinions. everybody wants to know. I'm right? sort of curious. Huh. I'm we all um, brag about it. Because mine changes it, every right? day. Is that good or is that bad? <laughs> well, I have a two year old, and let me tell you, she's like, she eats something she's not supposed to eat. Her stool looks one way. She eats everything fine. Her stool looks one way. So, it, supposedly What's it's supposed to be way? this nice kind of greenish brownish float on top but not sink all the way to the bottom but not have like fat in there in the stool when you look like film um so not mm, having super loose and not obviously having what, like little what? rabbit pellets rabbit pellets are like you're yeah. constipated and you need f- f- hydration I so guess. so 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 when it sinks what does that mean Like there's too much dense matter that's maybe not being digested properly, Mm. not broken down enough. (laughs) But then again, it's not supposed to be totally like buoyant because that means there's no water in it at all. And that means you're probably dehydrated. So people will say, well, yeah, I poop, but they're like rabbit pellets. And I'm like, well, that's... That's not good. No. You want to, you know, you want to like... Tell me this. I've experienced this fairly <laughs> recently. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Jillian would be so proud of me. I'm, like, talking about poop. <laughs> this this is not my specialty, it? by the way. Uh, but 
<laughs> so you, in this room, you're the specialist. So uh, I've experienced what lately, because thanks to Aaron Snyder, what what I've read on the internet is termed runner's diarrhea. Right. So I've done like a CrossFit wad, hiked the mountain, and then hit the Red Rocks Amphitheater. And I just sort of did a lot in one day. Yeah. What happened? Well, how does, why does that happen? Mm, I don't. Oh, so it's like I exert I myself to, like crazy, and the next thing you know, stress hormone. I am like the yeah, system it's probably, eliminates. It's probably so. What you're doing when you're pushing yourself like that? Um, one, it obviously will depend on well how well hydrated you are. So if you're drinking a lot of fluid, your body, especially under exertion, doesn't want to hold on to a lot of excess stuff. So if it's fairly hydrated before, you're not going to absorb as much water from your colon, so you'll have a looser stool. The second, I think, and I could be wrong. There's physicians out there listening. Believe me, I said this is not my specialty. Yeah. But there's a there's a there's a sympathetic, the second brain and uh-huh. this nervous system. There's what we call the um, autonomic nervous system, which resides in the limbic system of your brain, which is like where memory and sensation and bonding and love and PTSD and traumas. They mm-hmm. all live in that area, and that's the fight or flight or the rest and digest. So when you're pushing yourself like that, you're pushing your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight yep. nervous system. Yep. And you're pushing it to a point where it's increasing adrenaline secretion. That's what will happen. Adrenaline will go up. Cortisol will go up from yep. the adrenals. You may even have norepinephrine increase, which is a breakdown from dopamine for focus and all that. Mm-hmm. So you're getting a rush. You're also getting elevation of growth hormone and testosterone a bit. And so you're doing this exertion and you're pushing your sympathetic nervous system. And your gut, which has a large nervous system in it, goes, keeping on, holding on to all this shit is weighing me down. <laughs> and it just, oh, did I say that? Whoops, sorry. You can do that. Aaron okay. does it every time. Okay. You're supposed to do it like Aaron, though, and sh- crap, right? <laughs> sorry, Katie. <laughs> I forgot we were doing a podcast for a minute. Sorry. Um, it just, just we got to get rid of it. Your body's like, just okay, get rid of it. It's too much, and I'm stressed out, and I have all this adrenaline. Like, I've never hunted, but I've had a baby, and yeah. like, I've had these things where your adrenaline is just like <laughs> crazy high. Like, yeah. after you give birth, you think you could freaking pick up a car, yeah, you can't walk. Yeah. You can't move. <laughs> right. You're, you know, maybe bleeding to death, whatever, these things that happen. But your adrenaline and your cortisol and your, uh, what's the bonding and... hormone, your oxytocin. Yeah. All these things are just rushing through you and you're feeling that. And so you don't notice what your body's doing on the other end. Like quit bleeding, quit mm-hmm. doing this because your body's. So those hormones are there to make you get up that hill and feel that rush. Yeah. But the rest of your body's like, eliminate, eliminate. I don't need all this stress. I got to repurpose. I got to so take mo- energy and move it over here. And this is why I think exercise is such a great tool for people who are constipated. Because exercise stimulates that autonomic nervous system where if you're eating a meal, if you're not a really stressy person mm-hmm. like me and you run on adrenaline all the time, you just sit down and you have a meal and you rest and digest. And that's the other half, your parasympathetic. It's like, it's like, we got this. We're, we're relaxed and chill yeah. and let's digest our food. Well, now you're fight or flight. And that, that increases with exercise naturally. And so that will stimulate the gut to be like, I don't have time to digest. Let's get rid of this crap. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think exercise is such a good thing for people who are constipated because it turns that on. And most people who are really constipated, they don't exercise that much. Yeah. And so exercise, t- along with a multitude of other hormonal processes in the gut, you know, you have digestive hormones too, like ghrelin and leptin. They tell you when you're hungry. They tell you when you're not. These are all from the brain. I mean, they're yeah. like, and they just tell you like eliminate. And so I think prescribing exercise and everybody who's done a hard something has that like i gotta go now i gotta go find a tree yeah right and it's because your body's just like all right let's get rid of this so i think that that's yeah it's a that's because i know that when i'm feeling bloated or constipated a a good jog or hike up the hill then i then it then everything works loose right it's like (laughs) ready to go but one thing i wanted to talk about a little bit was um 
you, you in some of your recent podcasts you're talking about testosterone levels a couple of times yeah. and you're talking about hormones and especially mm-hmm. at age I'm going on 43 and I'm 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 feeling a difference in testosterone levels than I did a few years ago mm-hmm. even and when you say you're feeling that, like, what are you feeling? <laughs> okay, so because there's a lot of different feelings. So I'll let you. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> are so, we going to talk about poop and the S word all in the same sex. thing? Oh, okay. so there is a. a <laughs> you're a doctor, so we <laughs> believe me. I have men coming up to me talking to me about their testosterone. I told Ryan I'm getting old or something. And it used to be men coming yeah. up to me like trying to show off their testosterone. Now they want to talk to me about. I know their we go to these shows and everybody comes up here and that's like that's right where they go. Yeah, they go for the testosterone um, question. And so. and and for real. Like, so I've before Gritty Bowman, um, I worked a, a, a job. I would go to the job a couple days a week and then I'd be at home and relatively f- free to do what I wanted. Mm-hmm. I, I used my time to, to do Gritty Bowman because that was a passion and an interest, and but it wasn't something that paid the bills or anything. And uh, and it was stressful to a degree because, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, but it was more rewarding than anything. I'm doing Gritty Bowman. But then, fast forward another year, I quit my job, I moved to Colorado, I do Gritty Bowman full-time. You know, life has changed a lot. My wife had, had uh, you know, did, went through cancer and is doing better. And so, I'm sitting here uh, and I'm experiencing um, higher, like, a little less sleep. It seems like I'm kind of, I'm on the road often. Uh, I tend to be eating food that I wouldn't choose to eat uh, mm-hmm. if I were at home, and uh, and I'm still pushing my body pretty hard and work out, exercise, and, and fitness. Uh, but m- even more than that, there's just stress associated with uh, doing this this new adventure. Like I love it, but it's also really socially. Uh, you're emotionally. very focused on it, and that takes a lot of your focus, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, what ends up, what, what's happened? So, so my sex drive is not as powerful <laughs> as it was one year ago. Yeah. And and so I I can tell right there that it's not that my testosterone levels aren't the same. And then two, I know that I'm 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 really I get really tired uh, quite a mm-hmm. bit and. So I, you know, it's something that's been, um, like recovery is not the same, uh, as it was. I'm still pretty fit for 43 and can, can recover fairly quickly, but not like I did last year. So I was talking to Ryan about this and, 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 and gut health, that's where I feel it the most. Okay. So I used to eat pretty good and then just be a rock star. Now I'm I'm a lot more bloated, gassy, uncomfortable than I've been in a long time, mm-hmm. and and that's caused me to like go okay, Brian, time to get healthier and smarter and and take better care. But um, so that's what I wanted to talk about was you know as I experience these testosterone levels, like how do you fix that? <laughs> So Ryan talked about stress and cortisol. Uh, um, it's a big question because everybody's very different. And so if you're experiencing digestive discomfort, you you may have some, you know, especially with the gas and the bloating, there's a lot of different things. But maybe your stomach acid is a little low because you're stressed. You, you know, you kind of like, oh, I just moved to Colorado, quit my job. My wife has cancer. I'm traveling around. <laughs> That's your nature to talk like that, but probably the amount of long-term emotional stress that you've, I mean, a move alone can be an emotional stress, taking your kids away from their school and putting them like all these, that can be an emotional stress. Um, changing your job is a huge emotional stress. Take jumping off the cliff and being like, I'm going to be Gritty Bowman and I'm not going to have this job to fall back on. That's a huge emotional stress. And then you throw oh, my wife has cancer and she might die into that. And then you take on her role too. That's like, that's on the top of like the top three, right? Death, divorce, and uh, marriage. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) 
the three like most stressful, stressful things that can happen to a person. So you're dealing with like all this at once. So you like, oh, my digestion's a little off. But probably what's happened to you, if you were good a year ago and then you notice this, is mm-hmm. like the amount of stress hormone that you've kind of been chronically secreting to keep going yeah. because either you need to to get Gritty Bowman where it is, mm-hmm. everyone's depending on you financially, a now your wife has cancer, and so yeah. you have to be there for her and be there for the kids. And and your cortisol is just kind of like choo, 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 keeping you going. And maybe when it's so really explain stressful. what cortisol is. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It's like a, it's kind of like sugar, and it's secreted by the adrenal glands naturally on a uh-huh. circadian rhythm. So when you get up in and, the morning, so a circadian rhythm is your daily rhythm. Circadian is like hunters would would oh. really well know. Backcountry people would really well understand, or like the Amish would really well <laughs> understand the circadian rhythm. Yeah, you wake up with the sun, you go to bed with the sun. Yeah. Um, and that's what we used to do really before the invent of the like the light bulb. Yeah. And the light bulb, I mean, there's been tons of research and tons of theories on this, but the light bulb and artificial light has really changed our circadian rhythms because we are, even though we may not want to admit it, maybe in this culture we do, but we yeah. are very our gene codes are so similar to what they were thousands and thousands of years ago that artificial light has really changed the way in which we see our day. Mm-hmm. So normally, you get up in the morning with the sun, your cortisol should be higher. So this is the hormone that says, wake up, be a wake wife, up, you be have chipper. Energy. Like Aaron gets that in the morning. Usually. Yeah. So if you have that and then, so then there's you kind just... of a, it's actually kind of more like it's higher and then it peaks a little bit in that early morning, like mid morning. Mm-hmm. And then people can get that slump in the afternoon and starts to go down. And, but then by evening, your melatonin starts to kick in at about for adults. It's Is it like the counter regulatory hormone, like the opposite of? Well, melatonin um, is more controlled by darkness. So, okay. um, as the sun have, goes down, the body starts producing this hormone that says you should be sleepy now. Right. Uh, the pineal gland. Is it just melatonin? Is there another one? I feel like I'm. We don't care. Something. But basically. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but. But yeah, so that tells you, okay, now you're tired. Your cortisol should be low. Your melatonin increases. I'm tired. You know that nine o'clock slump? Yeah. If you you go to bed at nine o'clock when you have that slump and you get those first three hours before midnight of sleep, Mm -hmm. you wake the next day feeling really good. Yeah. If you push, like you edit, like he's a night owl. He'll push past that. Um, You get a second wind. Yeah, because you push through that melatonin rush, Mm -hmm. and then you find it's hard to go to sleep, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, that that's kind of how the cycle goes. Now, in today's world, there's kind of a few different pictures. One is there's people who function well and they get up on that circadian rhythm and it works good for them. There's people that are like flatlined. So a birth for women is a great way to flatline your HPA axis because. When you go through birth process itself, it's very stressful. So your stress hormones, it basically like shuts everything down. That's what I said. After the birth, you get all this euphoria and everything. Right. And then like two or three days later, Uh you're like, oh my God, what happened to me? Your body, all that's worn off. And that resets. So the HPA axis is in your brain. Your Mm -hmm. hypothalamus and your pituitary talk to each other. And then they tell your body, secrete hormones, do this. And cortisol Mm -hmm. is one of those hormones. Okay. So you can see some people flatline. So I would say, have you had a baby recently? That could be reason. Uh, Do you like have a lot of excess stress? When you say flatline, that means they... They don't have that nice curve high in the morning or lower at night. They're not chipper in the morning and then sleepy at night. No, or they're just exhausted. Like they can't sleep at night. And they can't get energy during the day. They're just bleh. But most people are this. They're lower in the morning. They start to get, they get a rush in the afternoon or something. And then at night, they're they're like, I can't go to sleep. Right. So they drink caffeine all morning. To wake them up. And then they can't go to sleep. Now, that may have to do with your slow caffeine metabolizer. But some of that, if you have long-term chronic stress like you, Mm -hmm. you can see that. And then after so long... 
So you'll I've see seen elevations, and then all of a sudden, you'll, there's different levels of adrenal fatigue. So yeah. you have your cortisol is really high, and then you get into stage three, and you start flatlining. Like yeah. your your adrenals just like screw this. I'm not going to keep pumping all the stress hormone for you. And that's and when what, people come when in your adrenals like are trashed. pumping stress hormone, and it's doing it's like giving you a little dose of adrenaline, basically like this adrenaline excitement. Adrenaline will this, be secreted in, with sympathetic stimulation. Remember that part of the mm-hmm, brain in your mm-hmm. limbic system. Tells your adrenal, like, uh, excitement. And, you know, like when a cop pulls up behind you, you get that, oh. Yeah. And that's adrenaline because right. your brain s- fears something. It I've never had a fear. cop pull up behind me. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, except for that one time. Uh, so, that's, they work so together. I've, and I've they're secreted a, by the adrenal gland, the same gland. I've seen a, a matrix where, or a chart graph. Yeah. Where they have, like, uh you know, morning and night, right? Yeah. And and they show that cortisol is high in the morning. Yeah. And, you know, like up here on the chart. Yeah. And then it falls off as it gets dark. Yeah. And melatonin is inversely related. Yeah. So it's it's pretty much non-existent in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then and as the day goes on. melatonin is a breakdown product of serotonin. So probably everybody knows what serotonin is because it's a key word in like depression. Yeah. And, and, serotonin kicks in more at night. It helps you to get chill and hang, lay down. That's why everybody wants comfort food at night, sugar, because that feeds serotonin. Mm-hmm. And then the breakdown product of that is melatonin. So the other piece of melatonin is if you don't have sufficient serotonin, you may not have sufficient melatonin. And so you'll see people who are maybe serotonin deprived with anxiety, depression, inability to sleep, insomnia, that kind of stuff. So okay. Those are all, those are neurotransmitters, but. All hormone related though. And so, so when, uh, when I'm having excess cortisol produced Mm -hmm. in my system, um, this, this, cause we were talking about circadian rhythms Mm -hmm. and cortisol. So, so carry on with that. So, so if you have elevated cortisol over time and you're not burning it off. So cardiovascular activity is a great way to burn off stress hormone, okay? okay? This is why when you go to the gym or you do a 7 to 20-minute workout, you feel better. Yeah. And not only do you feel better, um, when, you're, when, you're, when you're dealing with a lot of stress hormone, your brain is kind of getting saturated with it. And your brain doesn't really like it for long terms. So a lot of people will say, I have a lot of mental fatigue and cognitive issues. I feel really tired. I can't think straight. Yeah. When they're under a lot of stress. Uh Uh-huh. Because the body is not trying to, like, figure out math problems and stuff while you're having all this stress. It's just trying to get you through it. So the exercise actually burns off stress hormone and helps the brain. So that's another reason when you do that, you feel clearer in your head. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you feel, oh, I can actually like think. I don't feel so, whatever. So that happens. And so, then, but mm-hmm. you keep doing this thing of high stress hormone, you will decrease, naturally, you will have a decrease in testosterone because it will start competing a little bit. Testosterone is the winning hormone. You know, Dr. Jade, who we did a podcast with, he talks about that. It's man's winning hormone, and yeah. it does compete with other hormones. So it works very synergistically in things like, like I wrote a blog about it. We talk about it on the podcast about the hunting experience and the hormonal fluctuations that happen with stress hormones, testosterone, yep. growth hormone. You so talked grow- about it on the podcast a little bit. It was great. Right. And growth hormone and testosterone will kind of synergistically go up yep. during the hunting experience. Y- you have that experience of... Your sense is open. That's all stress hormone. That's yeah. kind of and testosterone because that helps you to focus. Mm-hmm. And then once you maybe get the animal, you go through the process of it, and you got to go back and you tell the stories. That helps to bring your your stress hormones down. So so your um your stress hormones will naturally go up when you stress yourself out, and so will testosterone. And like like Doctor Jade said, you know, just lift heavy shit all the time. Yeah, and that brings your testosterone. Which up. I do but it will I try also, to do because you do. it yeah. does it, i know it makes a difference and your like, growth hormone it'll naturally bring that up so in a hunt my sex goes way sex drive goes way up right. when i go right. lift heavy crap in the garage it's right. not only reason i do it <laughs> but i mean 
Well, it's <laughs> uh, us wives. Thank you. Uh, please go. I love some heavy stuff. Um, but yeah, so when you're when you're pushing yourself like that, that naturally happens. But what tends to happen is again, remember that happy place we talked about in yeah. like immunity. Yeah, is the same thing happens with hormones. Is that if you were doing like a backcountry hunt uh-huh. every day or every week, even for like for months. months, yeah. That happy place no longer exists. Because it's survival. You are now pushing yourself over into this right side, mm-hmm. which in immunity is autoimmunity. In this side, it's like your body starts going, I can't recover, dude. I don't have enough time to recover. And I have these elevated stress hormones all the time. Stress hormones are not about recovery, they are about immediate getting action. Getting you through it. And getting you through. You need to get those down in order to recover. And as you know, recovery is by far the most important piece I of I always building people, a muscle, having sex, yeah. like all these things. You have to be able to calm down. The gains are made at night when you're sleeping. When you're sleeping, right. The work is when I'm climbing the mountain like today with mm-hmm. Ryan. Yeah. But the gains are tonight when I go to bed. Yeah. Right. And so if you, I don't go to bed... I don't get the gains. Like I did the work, but I don't get those rewards. And when you're younger, like in your 20s, I, I've had kids in my 40s, which yeah. I realize now having children is a young woman's sport. <laughs> because sport. <laughs> because literally uh. when I was 22 or 25, a yeah. couple nights in no sleep, like the party's just getting started. Yeah. Now I like lose my mind. Yeah. A couple nights of sleep, I am just like, what the heck is going on? And Ryan sleeps like, he, if I told him go lay down on the floor right there and sleep, he'd like okay. And, and you could I be can usually do that do too, that. but I don't. I don't sleep like that, and so, and I run on. I tend to be more stress yeah. hormone related, so it's hard for me. It's hard for me to even. We went out to dinner last night with a bunch of people with you guys, and I was talking, having this motivating, and we got home, and it's like Ryan's like, oh, I'm tired. I got a hike in the morning. Let's go to bed, and it's like midnight, and I'm laying there going. I can't go sleep. Like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. And so I can't shut that down very easily. So I've had to learn that over the years. But for men, it's really important that you don't have that excess stress hormone all the time. And what you're seeing is that's not what's happening in society. What you're seeing is people are, one, not eating well. Yeah. And they're over-consuming. They're, they're either calorie-restricting because they're trying to lose weight, which is not good for your testosterone, or they're over-consuming calories, which puts stress on the pancreas and your insulin regulation, which means you're going to start becoming insulin resistant. So yeah. that's not good for you. And then you start getting the spare tire because now you got too much cortisol and your body's like, store it, store it. It's a sugar hormone, remember? Yeah. So yeah. it's going to store it. And um, cortisol and insulin are very like synergistic. And so... So in Brian's case, mm-hmm. yeah. like why, if you had to diagnose Brian here on the couch... <laughs> Why? I would say, come on, doc, help me out here. I would say probably long term elevated stress hormone. Uh huh. With you may be pushing like that happy place for you with your exercise. You're over, you're over, over exercising. So here's, there's a lot of different um, things that happen for testosterone. So you have free testosterone and you have bound testosterone. The free testosterone is what works. It's what's able to go into your cells and do its job. Yeah. But if it's bound to what we call sex hormone binding globulin, which is a Which sounds particle, good in a way. Yeah. But it's a sex hormone. It, it binds to estrogen. It binds to testosterone. But think about it like this. Sex hormone binding globulin's job is to, to pick up some of this testosterone so you don't have all this free testosterone rolling yeah. around you'd be like oh get Cave out man. You, you wouldn't be able to like control it so the sex hormone binding globulin like come over here let me hold you for a while and then it goes around and while it's holding that testosterone that testosterone can't do anything so you have this balance of free right. and bound if you calorie- break that stuff free man <laughs> well if you no ha- one like so let's say you're wearing yourself out mm-hmm. and you're over exercising. Yeah. Your stress hormones start going up. They're not going down enough. Well, your sex hormone binding globulin, it has a happy place. So if you stress yourself out for four weeks, 
it's fine. It actually shows ele- it shows decrease of sex hormone binding globulin, which means more free testosterone, mm-hmm. and it shows your testosterone goes up, right? Yeah. But there's a happy spot. Mm-hmm. You push yourself for six weeks, eight weeks. Mm-hmm. Your sex hormone bi- your sex yeah. binding globulin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sex hormone binding globulin goes up. Because it starts going. So it traps all I'm your. I'm stressed out here, so it actually increases and starts grabbing more testosterone. Now you don't have enough free testosterone because you pushed yourself over that happy place. And now your body is saying, I can't recover. Quit it. I'm going to take testosterone now. You're robbing it. I'm going to keep robbing it from you. So then people start going after this too much exercise, pushing themselves. They can't recover. They have muscle soreness, they have low testosterone, they have no libido, they have no energy. Sounds familiar. Okay. So how do we so, get Brian his libido back? <laughs> really what it's I'm not trying. gone. I mean, my <laughs> wife is skilled, so it, she, can, she can revive this corpse now and then. Well, truthfully, for um, most men, what happens, the first sign that there's something wrong yeah. is things don't work. Okay. And there's a few different reasons for that. One is actual testosterone. So That seems pretty severe to get to that point. It's actually very common and it's becoming more common in young men, which is weird. Yeah, right? yeah. And this is where um, I would say excess estrogens, pollutants in the environment and too much stress is increasing sex, the sex hormone binding globulin okay. and increasing their estradiol conversion, which means they're turning what they should be turning into testosterone mm-hmm. into estrogen. Okay. That's man boobs yeah, yeah, yeah. in the middle. Okay. They're carrying yep. a baby around and that's happening in younger, younger men. And that has a lot to do also with insulin. Okay. So, um, for most, most men, things don't work and they start freaking out. But there's also this idea of you have the, the actual hormonal piece, then you have the neurological piece. Mm-hmm. So sometimes that sympathetic, that brain, that yeah. part of your brain that tells your body to work yeah. is tired. And it's like you could be totally attracted to your wife and totally in the mood and it doesn't work. Mm. And men are like, I'm a failure. What's wrong with me? Yeah. And what I say is like, you're stressed out, dude. Your body is saying to you, like, you don't want to have sex right now. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we're we're having a hard time just getting by here. Yes. <laughs> we're having a hard time getting huh. And this seems to and be the only way I can get your attention. <laughs> and that will get guys' attention. Yeah. And then, of course, it's like if you drink too much alcohol, it's pretty common because alcohol blunts that part of the brain as well. Mm-hmm. So men that get really <clears throat> drunk, it doesn't work. Yeah. And they're just like, Phew. So, and then there's also. I don't drink. Ever. He never drinks. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ryan likes to exercise, though. That's kind of his addiction. Yeah. And so Ryan can easily push himself into past that happy place, which is what I think guys in your age group are doing because you're still not old enough that you can't do it, but you're not 20 anymore. And so you're thinking, I got to do more. I got to do more. And yeah. what's actually the secret is to not do more, is to do the right stuff the right way right? and not do more. It's like um, our friend here talking about he's doing triathlons. Like the triathletes are unhealthy, dude. They push them. <laughs> you just upset a few people. He yeah. said, I will never do another triathlon. Yeah. Because he did so many of them and it's well, so I've read hard that. on your body. Like your happy place is like so screwed up for so long. It's Yeah. Hard to find I, I've that. read that a lot about endurance sports in general, endurance athletes, it that it can a lot really long-term have a, you can pull it off, mm-hmm. but it can have a, a long-term effect on your health and it can take a while. Mark Sisson talks about a lot in yeah. the Primal Blueprint and, and uh, it, it doesn't necessarily, it's not, it's not in my wheelhouse anyway, so I don't get sucked into that stuff. Yeah. But, but I think there's a misconception <sighs> with men because you have a body part that like, Something happens or it doesn't. Right. Women don't have that, you know? Right, like, right. We're like, all right, men do. And we don't put enough credit in the fact that men are stressed out and that they are like their brain is stressed out. And we look at it as like a failure. But really, it's it's more of looking at it and like being, well, what is bothering you? And what is it about this that you can't do this? And 
it's just, it's really addressing their stress. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big piece of it. And well, we, we don't do that because men don't want to accept that, that that's happening. I think that's the biggest part of it is the stress, right? Stress, yeah. I mean, you can look at you and see what you've taken on in the last year. There's been yeah. a lot of big... Definitely you know, stress is... And the thing is, is <clears throat> I, I, uh, the last time I went on was in February. And before that, there was a pretty big gap, like November. So I haven't been out in the woods hunting and there's something about when you go out in the woods and you it seems it seems like it resets all the stress stuff right like i come back after two weeks of being gone and all the stuff that i'm all twisted up about i don't care about anymore right like it's like it puts it all in perspective it like well, unplugs the cortisol of stress hormone and you're living on a circadian rhythm so you you're waking with the sun you're going to bed with the sun you don't have a bunch of artificial light you're you're like sleeping at night in a natural yeah. environment and you're having these cleansing experiences during the day you're breathing fresh air you're walking and moving and your blood is flowing these are not things that people do in an average day. They sit in their car and then they sit at a desk and then they sit in their car and then maybe they go to g- the gym for 30 minutes and then they go home and they sit on their couch. And I mean, people barely even play with their kids anymore because they're so tired and stressed out or they're self-employed like I am and yeah. they got to come home and work till midnight to keep up with everything. Yeah. And so we just don't have that. And I think that's what I know for myself. I'm jealous of Ryan. Yeah. We have more fights about him doing it because I'm like, what about me? <laughs> Do I get to yeah. just leave for two weeks and leave you here with the kids and go to the mountains <laughs> and not talk to a single soul? No. Right. Like I don't. And he's like, well, I wish you would. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to leave you here for two weeks with these kids and I'm going to leave and say, on my DeLorme, I'll be back in two weeks. <laughs> Drop a pin. He says, I would love you to do that. But you know what? I get that. I think it's more that jealous thing because when he comes back, he's just like fresh. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. just like relieved. And I'm like. Dude, the sex drive <gasps> is unreal when I come back. Yeah. And it's, it's solid. So does that mean and that I killed the cortisol? Because I'm like, you killed don't the cortisol. act so that's, happy. That's a don't good way do to that. put it. Yeah. You so this is that. the thing is, is that that is important for both men and women. Like you need to get out in nature and you need to be exposed to that. Even living in more natural environments. Yeah. Like this place we're in right now, these folks live surrounded by trees, surrounded by wood. They can walk out into a forest yeah. and they're five minutes from town, but you, you have that exposure. Yeah. And think about the millions and millions and millions of people that live in concrete jungles. And well, then they worry about, why can't I have a sex drive? Why can't I do that? And so hunting or just going out in the mountains, that's why it's so powerful. Well, I, like last year, I did go out quite often mm-hmm. every couple of weeks. And I'm home for a week or two. And then I'm out for two weeks. And I'm home for a week or two. And I didn't experience stress. Right. Like it just, I didn't feel like I do. I was sleeping like perfect, yeah. sleeping long hours. But then after extended months of not doing that and really going to all the shows and going to Vegas and and editing till late at night and all of that, like not in a in a, in that place mm-hmm. that's I haven't felt this worn down, you know. Right. In a well, long you've time. Taken on a lot, you know, <clears throat> a lot of new responsibilities with the gritty bowman yeah. and the big move and all these different things. I mean, that's bound to catch up. I so, would say I would say probably decrease your exercise a little bit. Do more high intensity training that's short bursts because that's going to stimulate more of a hormone response. Yeah. And then really work on maybe trying to heal your gut lining, maybe think about taking some hydrochloric acid to help break down stuff. Well, that's like what protein. I was going to ask is and um you were mentioning work on your liver a little bit because you do travel and you do that and it helps, you know. So I try to eat clean, you know, and and yeah. stay away from. I go organic when I can mm-hmm. and and uh, eat eat whole foods, you know. And I don't eat a lot of processed foods or processed sugars or anything like that. So, but I listened to your podcast and you were talking about um, how to like Ryan. Back to Ryan's example where his gut wasn't as is absorbing like it, sh- like mm-hmm. like ideally he'd want it to, mm-hmm. and I realize that you know cortisol and stress is impacting the health of my gut. So as I address stress, 
that that should help. But what about what do you, did someone eat in order to increase their gut biome and make it healthier and stronger? And well, really, it's about cutting out obviously the simple carbohydrates mm -hmm. like flowers and tons of grain. Some people do great with carb. I'm just saying like the simple carbs. Um, thinking about introducing, like cutting out the big allergens, especially in the beginning. And yeah. that's like our gut restoration program. We talk about that. Just cutting out the things that are going to stress your system. Well, I know for me, when we did, when we went through that whole process and we got tested and realized where I was and what I wasn't absorbing, mm -hmm. um, there were certain things that we kicked out of my diet. We were really hammered down on sugar, anything inflammatory, um, anything processed. You know, that helped. But we also added, you know, I was drinking a lot more, taking in a lot more probiotics and digestive enzymes and all these things to kind of build my gut back up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it took some time, but it, it, it really, you know, it paid off and it really helped me. You know, I've heard a lot about probiotics and stuff and, you know, and, and there's just so many options out there and I've heard it doesn't work or it does work or yeah. it only works if you take well, while you're taking it, as soon as you stop, it's gone and on that kind of thing. What is this? What's the story? I think, on that? I think today in today's world, if you have the ability to take a probiotic, you know, you want to take a high quality one um, you may want to take one that is encapsulated so that it can bypass the stomach and yep. get through to the gut. And then you want to think about just eating some more soluble and insoluble fibers that are going to help feed the bacteria that you do have in your gut. And obviously you want to address, there's, there's a lot of science that's been coming out for a long time about bacterial and viral and fungal infections in the gut. And people have these infections and parasites and stuff. And that's what's causing some of these things. So like we would do a stool test or you can do a urine test as well to see breakdown metabolites in the stool and in the body. And you can see if somebody is actually having a bacterial infection, if they're having a viral or like a yeast in problem or fungus infections and stuff mm -hmm. that are that are basically inhibiting the microbiome. And it's really important to also remember that you do, your microbiome is established when you're born yeah. and it comes from your mother. And there has been a large, large percent of children nowadays that are born via cesarean section. And they don't get that introduction to their mother's microbiome, which means their immunity, because they don't go through the vaginal secretions. And that's mm -hmm. where they build that. And so we do, I think, see a lot more skin problems, gut problems, autoimmune problems, because children don't have good microbiomes to start with. And so... In most people's case, it's just kind of an overabuse of antibiotics, medications. And remember, you may not even think you're taking an antibiotic, but if you're eating conventional meat, if you're yeah. drinking conventional dairy, right? If you're it's been injected if with you're working in environments where you're exposed to chemicals, you're you're likely taking antibiotics and you don't even know it. Yeah. And so your your immune system is always having to manage that. And this is why there's antibiotic resistance now because it's kind of invasive. And so, I mean, hunters know this. Hunters do it. You guys are getting your meat and that's awesome. So you're, you're eliminating one thing. But that, what I always say is like, I don't really like to eat meat out anymore because I'm not really big into factory farm meat. And like I have chickens and I had to, kill like a baby chicken because its mom stomped it to death and it traumatized me oh, and i was like i'm not gonna eat chicken ever again but i realized that i re i realized that when i eat out i don't really unless it says on there I, we go to a restaurant yeah. that has it like i don't i probably know that beef has got some kind of antibiotic because they're in a feedlot and or they're fed grain hormones. and they have to be like these bacterial okay. things have to be managed. So if you're eating those foods, you're being exposed to that as well. Yeah. So again, consciously thinking of that. And then, you know, the probiotic has to, I use like medical grade probiotics. Um, and I know Wilderness Athlete has one and, you know, all these companies have them. And I guess it just depends on the person. Some people will take one. I would be like, oh, that's probably not that good. And they'll take it and they'll be like, 
oh my God, I started taking that thing and like my life changed. Right, right. So again, and everybody has what different if not, strains. What if they're not actually wanting to take an actual probiotic pill? I fermented mean, foods fermented are a great foods. way. We do. A, we talk a lot about What are some of your foods. favorite fermented foods? We like kimchi, kombucha, kombucha. Kim, kombucha. Kimchi, I got this. Dude, I can't eat kimchi. No. That stuff's just <laughs> nasty. Like <laughs> I'm is. pretty good with fermented foods. I like fermented foods. That is one that is wrong. That's cabbage and it's, it's strong. It's, yeah. some, it it's, it's strong. the spices. Oh, you're, yeah, you don't yeah, like I spice. spicy. I like this. I love yeah. sauerkraut. I eat it every day. There you go. Yeah, so sauerkraut's good, and you want to get the sauerkraut that's like real sauerkraut because they make, if you go to the store and buy it in the jar, like in the jarred vegetable section, it's just made with vinegar. It's not real sauerkraut. So yeah, you we buy this stuff like at Trader Joe's or something. or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's like it's real like sauerkraut. Real cabbage that's And yeah. you can fermented. even, like, he yeah. does, like, pickle. Um, you can do pickles that are fermented. You can do pickled carrots and, like, um, beets and so, fermented. So you can ingest some <clears throat> different mm-hmm. different fermented foods. But what about, you know, I, I, read, I heard uh, maybe it was Rob Wolf, and he was talking about how your gut bacteria – feeds off of the fiber like in broccoli yeah like like you have to feed that bacteria or it doesn't thrive right that's so where the fibers are that. important the fibers are important because they break down into what we call multi-chain there's a long word and i think i'm getting tired but yeah uh, they they eat those and they need those and if you don't if you don't eat enough of that type of fibrous food, you're not going to get that for your gut. But that's also the other reason when you start telling someone, okay, you need to eat a bunch of vegetables and fiber. And nobody, they have never done it. Like their fiber is like potatoes and white rice. Uh, they start eating like green vegetables and broccoli and then they Bad just blow it up and they come to you and they're like, I do not want to eat vegetables. Cause, but what's happening is you also have to be able to digest, remember, mm-hmm. break down those vegetables Vegetables are actually, when they're not cooked, they are hard to digest. So okay. your body has to have enough digestive fire and enzymes and hydrochloric acid and all these things to break down a bunch of fibrous food. Then it goes through the gut. And if it sits in there, uh, y- yeah, your bacteria are going to like it, but you may also not have enough bacteria to break it down. So now you're like... Pfft. Bloated. And that might be a sign of your microbiome, like you do need more beneficial bacteria before we start feeding you like all this stuff. So you bloat up like a pig. There's also like conditions called SIBO, which are infections in the small intestine. Yeah. That bacteria, bad bacteria, climbs up into your small intestine. Yeah, where it's I, not heard, supposed I heard to that. Be. That would sound like a horror film on your last that podcast. But those are those are usually type A, stressed out, yeah, white women. So <laughs> you have a lot of SIBO and it's pretty common. They come in and they're like, I'm so healthy and I'm skinny and I work out and I do all this. And I'm like bloated. Like, look at my stomach. <laughs> and I, we do a breath test on them and it's methane or um, yeah. hydrogen. You can tell what types of SIBO they have. And, but you have to treat that with antimicrobials basically. So, 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 um, when I talk to people about eating healthy and eating mm-hmm. vegetables and I'm like, you, you need to eat a lot of vegetables. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They come back and they're like, yeah, I do. I eat carrots and I eat potatoes all the time. <laughs> and so when you're talking about ideally, what are some of the best vegetables that people should be getting in and why? Leafy greens. I mean, we Bitter grow- vegetables. <clears throat> so leafy greens. Kale, spinach. Kale, uh, if you can digest it. It's yeah. a little harder, but you, well, collard greens. If you are taking in... Charred. Large, I mean, any kale, really. It's best if it's cooked a little bit. I eat a lot of raw kale. It's hard to digest. Is it? it is, yeah. Um, I do all right. Unless what is you it? maybe blend what it up in like your smoothie, because it's broken down the matrix yeah. a little bit. It makes it a little bit more absorbable. Like... Um, it's 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 part of the sulfur family too, so it's like I do broccoli, brass, kale, KCA asparagus, and, all those. Mm-hmm. and so those tend they, those can make people bloaty because they're they used to, but I was like I, yeah. I I worked my way into them, so now it's yeah. like not that big a deal, right? Yeah, and um, but yeah, I we like do a bitter. lot of different leafy greens. I mean, you know, different varieties, but kale is is kind of a I like kale. It's easy to grow. It, it's really. so easy to grow. <laughs> Spinach is another one. Pak choy, all these different things. And um, okay, leafy greens. Leafy greens. Yep. Yeah. What and, about like beets? And not not head lettuce. That's not considered one. 
Yeah. What about beets? Beets are great. They're a great liver food. They are high in sugar. So, you know, you wouldn't want to eat a ton of beets, but they are good for the liver. They're very cleansing and they've got a lot of fiber in them. Okay. If you just eat them, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They They're do loaded. taste like Beats dirt to a lot of favorites. people. So, again, if you don't like bitter, you'll have a hard time. If you don't like the taste of dirt, you got to cook them right. Right? I don't yeah, know. I'm, I'm do so like into dirt. dirt. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, well, this okay is the dirt? thing. Yeah, we I all am. need more dirt. This is the whole thing behind the microbiome, too, is, yeah. that, is that you think about your kids. Now we're so afraid of our kids like getting dirty. And no, don't eat that. Don't. Like, I'm I mean, all when about we were kids, dirty we were and like, nasty. You know, and... You do, our soils are, you know, you can go into soils, whatever, but you do need to have exposure to things like, like dirt is a great thing because you can build a microbiome. Now you can also get horrible things. You don't want to eat dirt out of like the cat box, but you know what I mean? It's. So so tell me this real, so tell me this, Ryan, like if you were to eat, um, uh, let's say, hello, can you hear me? Check, check. Yeah. It seems like it went quieter. Um, Is that me? It, no, so, I can hear okay. you. Okay. As long as you can hear me. Yeah. Okay, so let's say you're 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 eating and uh um what what's a typical breakfast, lunch and dinner for you? Well what's it look like? We <laughs> we raise a lot of chickens, so um for the eggs. We yep. get eggs I I, I love could, eggs. I could eat eggs every morning. Yep. I don't get sick of eggs. My wife she gets a little tired of so like the Suzanne. daily. I do eat eggs every morning. I do too. I eat eggs three times a day. I sometimes. don't need that much variety in my. Well, breakfast. eggs are a perfect food. They are, and they're I like protein and fat. For they me. have great cholesterol. They're the, they're the perfect protein. Remember, really, yeah. you need cholesterol to make hormones. Is another thing. Everybody's on cholesterol right, medications. Right. You need cholesterol for hormones. So eggs are like the perfect and, food for that. And to add into the eggs, like I make a lot of omelets. So okay. you know, I'll use a leafy green um, spinach uh-huh. during the summer months when we're getting it out of the garden. Mushrooms um, if we ate chantelle season or something. Yeah, a lot of mushrooms and stuff. Onions out of the garden. All these different vegetables to go into the eggs. Now, this this time of year, I'll be honest, I, I, I can get up and just do eggs. Yep. Eggs is easy. Okay. Um, throughout the day, obviously trying to get as many greens as we can. We do this kale powder thing that we're really big on. Um, that's just something that we add. We add it to soups. We add it to my daughter, for example. She loves pancakes. Uh-huh. She loves French toast. She loves waffles. Okay. And we make these protein-packed pancakes. And we'll add kale powder, which we've made, to those. So she's getting all these greens, which is like the best way to get greens into kids, right? Um, but gosh, as for dinners, we are so simple. It's taking meat out in the morning, whether it's going to be bare. Um, I have an Instapot, and I uh-huh. love it. We do that, a ton those of soups are amazing. and stews. Okay. Uh-huh. I can come home from work and throw... All the vegetables I have in the fridge in there, some bear meat and like some bone broth. And it's like it's like the best soup you've ever had. Or I can throw potatoes in there yeah. and and bone broth. Now that she mentioned bone that, broth that, heals your gut. That's maybe. something that's really good for your gut. Um, and you can make that. You know, from now. I mean, last year I I really I, like I really like bone broth. I've made a lot is. of it actually. It's so good. Um, yeah, it's good. I made it out of my bear from Prince of Wales Island. Yep. When I kept all the bones from that, but I'll tell you what it tasted like. Bad fish. Yeah, because those bears eat a it, lot of it fish. It tasted like... What did the bear taste like? It tasted like uh, beef <laughs> and smelled like fish. <laughs> Nasty. And I kind of liked like it. it. Like, it didn't bother me at all. Like, really? It tasted like beef, and it was so tender, and yeah. it just it, it was so good. But it had a But it smell smelled to it. like fish, man. Like, <laughs> we See, that's why it. I like my fall bears out of Washington. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, man, they're yeah, 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 berries. Yeah. Uh, but... I agree. Um... But yeah, gosh, I mean, we just, it, it's really just whole foods. Okay. You know, it's garden foods. It, it's stuff that we've put up. Whole vegetables yeah. and yeah. whole fruits. Chopped up. And, oh, I mean, we talk about Soup this. Stews. Sometimes it's seasonal. You know, we don't have a big garden yeah. in the winter. We may not eat as many, like, greens and stuff all day because we just don't have access to it. And I don't want to go buy it. I don't want to go to the grocery store and buy a bunch of leafy greens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But we, Fair you know, I mean... Eating too is one of these seasonal things. You don't, it's not like you have to, it's not like you have to eat these things every day to be healthy. If you think about our bodies, we're seasonal beings, you know? Yeah. Winter is a time for introspection, summer is a time for an ex- extroversion. If you eat like the same time, 
I've noticed some people, they eat the same things all the time. They start developing allergies to them. They start having problems to them. So easy, eating seasonally is one way to kind of counteract that. If you live in the Northwest and you're eating a bunch of tomatoes in the winter, that may not be so good for your system. Or oranges. Yeah. We don't live in a tropical I area, that I right? Don't really, like oranges are not like, I don't really do well on citrus. Yeah, or spices. Our younger daughter doesn't either, so we've had to. We've but had a dilemma. As far as tomatoes go, like I we can up all the spaghetti yeah. sauce, you know, in the fall, and that's what we. Well, you I guys live on that stuff this time of year. You guys have some great stuff on on your on your podcast about. Uh, you have recipes. You guys will talk about. We're working on it. How to how to prepare some foods? How sure. to uh, what to eat? Um, you, you guys are addressing hormones and testosterone, all the things that we talked about on, on this podcast, mm -hmm. there's so much more. Um, and I've, I've really, you know, if anything, like some of the stuff I'll, I'll study about or read about from somewhere. One thing I, I like about having someone do a podcast like what you guys are doing is it also reminds me to get back on track. Like sure. it's like a motivational. <laughs> it's like, okay. It reminds us to get back on track. We're like, what should we talk about this week? What are we having a problem with? And then it helps us. Like, you so, know, we... so in my position, like what's the prescription going forward? <laughs> well, one, you probably need to do, if your gut bothers you, do like a gut test and see if there's anything that could, we, you Does that mean see? you got to poop in a cup? Is that kind yeah, of how that it's goes? cool. You poop it saran wrap in, your, in a little hamburger cup. <laughs> and then you put it in this thing. And luckily, then you just ship it in and they send results and we look at it. You could do that if you want. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, they want to see that. Yeah. If I tell them, okay, we're going to cut all this stuff out of your diet. And you're going to do it. They're like, why would I do that? I so show them a, a test and there's a lot you can learn go, wow. from that then. Yeah. And then what you about can do that. There's some blood tests you can do just to be on top of that as well, like mm -hmm. lipids and the general things. Yep. Hormones. You can do hormones. That's easy. Those are blood draws. Yep. Um, especially like testosterone and all the precursors and stuff like sex hormone binding globulin, testosterone, estradiol, DHEA, all these yep. things in that cycle for men. You can have those tested. And then you could make a prescription program. For you right now, I would say probably what you need to do is find more of your happy spot and you need to be doing more stress relieving activities that don't require such excessive push by your body. You need so to when more. Aaron's like, yeah. let's go on this a hike time year, four times it's been too long. Uh, when it's you, you know, four times a week where you're pushing yourself, you might need to say, you know what, I'm only gonna do two days a week and then I'm gonna go to yoga. I know people don't want to hear that, but <laughs> kind of like yoga. No, but yoga, oh, no. but yoga does what yoga is like a practice of mm -hmm. calming yourself down and becoming more internal. And when you do that, it's just like meditation. It doesn't matter if you're actually meditating and like transcending to somewhere. What matters is you're sitting there, even if you're just counting to 10, 20 times over, yeah, right. you're just calming down your brain. Yeah. And you're decreasing the stress hormone. So that's all it's doing. Now, if you go to hot yoga and do vinyasa yoga and you're sweating, that is not <laughs> yoga like I'm talking about. Right, right, right. But that's what people who like to push their happy place all the time. <laughs> I got to go to hot yoga. I got to sweat. That's yeah. him. And I'm like, let's just go to yoga and like be. He's but like, that well, does add that. in a way. I will say that as I've as I've gotten older that, um, you know, I guess working out every day intensely, like climbing the tower trail is probably, uh, it's fine, but I, I, as long as I'm giving myself that time to recover and I'm not because mm -hmm. I got other things to do. Right. And maybe just eating how, how you're eating sounds good, you know, yeah. but maybe if you had the gut test and then maybe working on your microbiome and, uh, maybe taking some hydrochloric acid, digestive enzymes, and then, uh, probiotic and mm -hmm. just to help you kind of break all that stuff down because most people's pancreases too are kind of sluggish and they don't produce a lot of digestive enzymes. So they just, you need that stuff to break that food down. So you get bloated, you don't feel good, you're gassy. So that could be, those are like simple things you can do with your meal. And then yeah. when you go out in the woods, you know, you're getting that time of the year, you're out there and maybe it's not all about hiking and killing yourself and pushing yourself to the limit. Maybe it's taking trips where 
you're just out there and you're you're decreasing that and it's helping you. So yeah, you know, way. I don't know about that. Um. I, I don't know how you just, <laughs> he doesn't understand that. I'm like, go out in the woods and just, he's like, what? what yeah, no. It's I don't know how re- to do that. I, but I don't feel stressed from, I mean, maybe I do in a certain way, but it's a, it's different. So if you, so, you know, the yoga is great, but it's just another way to decrease that. So when you're doing a couple hard days a week of exercise and then maybe a couple hard, a couple days where you're doing more restorative exercise, yeah. which, and then you're taking a couple days off and you're not doing anything like that because that's your recovery and, and you need that, especially at this age, you're not, your cells aren't replicating it the, the way they were 20 years ago. So you but can't Hillary, recover as fast. Uh, you just have what to What if I, it. what if I want to be. <laughs> well, then you need to take testosterone like and hormones. Yeah. You need to take external Exogenous shots in testosterone. your gut and we need to like, yeah. And then you can have so what's everything wrong with that? kind of shrivel and then you can be <laughs> angry and answer. then you can be buff and you can hike mountains and then and then you'll have to quit taking it at some point and then you'll be back to where you were so you might as well start here and like build yourself back up okay but i'm with you brian when you say you know when we go do these things like we climbed the mountain yeah that was a blast it I was doing those things kinds of things and i feel better when i do it mm-hmm. i feel i feel bad i feel i wouldn't like my consider today levels. a hard hike today would have no. been more restorative hike Okay. I feel like my cortisol levels it was go short, up, and it was intense but short. When I don't do that, I yeah. get grouchy when I go. Yeah. don't do that. I feel so much better, and she can attest to that. I get, I get like nervous, like yeah. I need to go do something, and I feel no, so much better it's when I do. So and it, irritating and because he's like he travels for work. He's been gone for two days. He gets home. The girls are like, ah, and I'm like, whoo, finally. He's like, I got to go work out. And I'm like, what? You're leaving again? <laughs> because he just like cannot, he's just like that. Yeah. But in truth, I'm like that too. And I, I told him, I said, I got to start working out because I'm getting irritated. Like I get the stress hormone on my brain. But once I've done it, once it doesn't do have to it, be. For, it's like, it could be half an hour. Yeah. I feel better and then I can relax. But I get, I get real antsy and real like nervous if I haven't worked out for a couple of days. Well, I'll tell you this, that uh, where I... When I know that something's not right is digestion and sex drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and when that's not dial when when that goes downhill, it goes downhill pretty quick. But I also think you need to remember right. that when you're eighteen to twenty two, your testosterone is the highest it will ever be in your life. Mm-hmm. Unless you're taking exogenous hormones. Okay. Yeah. So if you keep thinking back to when you were like twenty to twenty six or eighteen to twenty six, why don't I want to have sex right, like right, that? Right. Well, you know what? Your life is probably a lot different. You have three kids. Yeah. Your wife doesn't have the sex drive she had at 22. And you're you're in a different phase of your life. And you don't have that same amount of testosterone that yeah. you had back then. And to get back to that, it, you and can't I'm okay really with, do that. So I didn't really like those years. It's like different. Like it was a little too intense. <laughs> Like this level of testosterone is good. I just want what I had last year. Well, I think it's just stress in your life. And you've dealt with a lot of emotional stress and that's what you need to take into context. So you need to do more restorative things that help you to get back to that emotional place. You know, for some people, it's like prayer. For some people, it's meditation. For some people, it is just bonding with their spouse. Not even, it's not like you have to have sex, you know. Women work differently, guys. Like, if you <laughs> haven't figured it out by now, if you come home and you're like, I don't want to talk to you, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to do this, and you come home and you go to bed and you fall asleep, women are like, well, you didn't even pay attention to me, you didn't hug me, you didn't kiss me, you didn't say hi, you didn't talk to me about my day, you didn't ask about anything. Yeah, It's not like she's saying to you, you never have sex with me. She's saying, you don't pay attention to me because yeah. that increases her estrogen and that increases her oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. And that makes her happier. See, so sex doesn't this case, have to happen. Men think of like, I need to have sex to bond. Women think of it. Like if you just give me some attention and some love and some nourishment, it doesn't have to be sex. That's going to make me healthier, and I'm going to be a whole lot nicer to you, and I'm going to be a whole lot nicer. Yeah. And your deal is like, well, you never come over here and have sex with me, <laughs> so why do I need to do that with you? And, and women just don't work that way. 
Yeah, in this case, I mean, I don't know if it's because I was one of eight kids and I had six sisters and I grew up in a house full of women. Whoa. But, dude, when you describe how women feel, that's just me. I do like the sex part, too. <laughs> but, dude. No, well, there are men like Like, you Suzanne's too, like, though. what is, why do you got to be like the woman in this relationship? <laughs> Like, I just need you to know that you really appreciate me. So, for but men, like, here's the deal: men, for your testosterone to to be good, yeah, your spouse needs to respect you and appreciate you, and she needs to give you gratitude. Men who don't get any gratitude, they don't get any thank you. It's different. Like a woman wants that, like. I love you. You're special. I appreciate you just like a man does. But a man wants, it's a different, testosterone works a little differently. Mm -hmm. You're winning when you're appreciated. Yeah. And you're motivated when somebody says to you, you're doing such a good job. I appreciate it. I love it. And you, your testosterone goes up and a woman, her estrogen She's going to have to explain that to Suzanne. But see, like Suzanne, like you maybe your testosterone goes up when Suzanne nurtures you a little bit. Yes, it does. And her estrogen goes up when you thank her more and you appreciate her more. So estrogen and testosterone are basically the same hormone. They're just in different amounts in men and women. And you may just, your testosterone is nurtured more by, I need affection. And her estrogen is nurtured more by, I need appreciation. And men tend to be, I need respect and appreciation and gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I need that from you. And if you keep telling me what I do wrong and I don't do anything right, and I never do enough for you, they just tend to go this way. And I like, folks, this is me. (laughs) Because he is like... (laughs) He will take abuse like nobody and not say anything and then eventually just be like, I need a little gratitude here, right? Yeah. And I'm always like, na 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 and and he is like he can go a long time without appreciation and gratitude. It's amazing. But I've seen it in his work, Mm -hmm. I've seen it in his friends, I've seen it in myself. If I don't give that to him, he just shuts down. Yeah. He don't talk to me. He don't give me what I want, and he knows what I want, but he's not getting it. Yeah. And this is what happens in relationships is that – Ryan people, seems like such a talker, you know, like – He wants to talk like, about his feelings most of the time. constantly. <laughs> that's right. He wants to talk about his feelings. He's right, like so – That's the vibe I get here. He's like, what feeling? Like this pain I have in my knee? Uh, you know, I mean, he's just – Well, it, it's funny because like when we're alone, like when we're at, at the house – I do talk a lot more, but I don't talk when we're out much. I'm yeah. a pretty quiet guy. Yeah. But man, when we're at home, I'm the one talking and ranting and raving yeah, about I'm stuff that I like, see. And she's tired of hearing about it. But uh, No, I mean, I th- relationships also evolve. I always, I've said this in a podcast. Ryan and I have lived three different lives together. We lived a life with him working in Alaska for seven years, us being separated half the year. Then mm-hmm. we lived medical school, 10 yeah. years of that life. Now we've lived a life with children. We have three separate total lives. And in all those decades, we have changed. Right. And what's cool about what started this whole podcast and we were talking about is that Mm -hmm. Train to Hunt and this community brought him out into a place where he said, people respect and appreciate me. Yeah. And I know, but I they're like me. They right. know, they understand me. Well, yeah, I don't think it was because, that. I was, because I, I'm not I looking for appreciation say, from anybody. No, but, but what what I thought was cool was it it was just neat to be around guys that have the same interests as me, yeah. and I get to communicate with people who have the same you know likes. Right, and we get to help folks, younger kids especially, and I get to that haven't got to see what I've got to see. I've been to a lot of places. I've done a lot of hunts. Right. I've done a lot of fishing. I've been to, you know. It certainly, um, from the first time, I, I want to learn a lot from you because, you know, just seeing what you're able to do, just like I do with Aaron, you know, and other guys that I watch and see how they work and, and how they do what they do. Um, I can see you uh, coming into that community and saying, and, and being like, yeah, I'm valued here. Like, Value. That's the perfect word. I'm valued. And I don't think, even from our spouses, we may not get that. Because here's the deal. When you're married, you're like in the same energy. You Mm -hmm. don't sometimes see these things. You don't understand it. You don't feel it. And if you have children, 
Yeah. We all, Ryan and I were married 11 years before kids. Yeah. So when kids came, we were married there like was eight. huge transition for yeah. us because we were like, well, we're used to having our own lives, our selfish ways, do what we want. If he goes, he goes hunting, I go to Europe. Like we, we <laughs> had these like ability. Now we have kids and it changes that dynamic. And now your kids become your like, like if he comes home from work, I mean, mm-hmm. my daughter is like standing at the door. And, yeah. and I'm like, what about me? And he's too busy because he's got kids crawling on him. Yeah, yeah. And it's awesome for him because for the first time he gets that immediate gratification of like, I really appreciate you, daddy. I love you. I'm so happy you're right, home. And right. that's just so fulfilling. And children just change your life. But children also change the way you communicate sometimes. They change the privacy you have. They change yeah. your... They change your like. Sleep what do pattern. you think about how oh, your kids sure. should be taught or how you should be raised? Like, there's so many things you don't think about when you don't have kids, and then you have kids, and you realize like, wow, marriage is really hard, <laughs> and yeah. having kids is really hard. But actually, your marriage is the hardest relationship because you're not blood related. You have to compromise. Yeah. And you have to find value in each other that maybe is really hard to find when you're having emotional issues and you're mm-hmm. having things like cancer and pain and things in the family and problems with the kids. And you just kind of neglect each other. It's really, really common. And people that don't lose that, yeah. even if it's five minutes a day where they really focus in on that together, yeah, that's like when we... Uh, interviewed Amanda and Jesse. Yeah. Like one of my favorite interviews at the end, we asked him, you know, like, what are you most grateful for? And they were both just like, bam, Jesus. Yeah, it was easy. They didn't, really there easy wasn't this like, huh? When we asked him, what's your weaknesses and what's your strengths? There, you know, that's always like, huh, I don't want to like expose yeah. myself. Yeah. But when we asked him, what are you most grateful for? They were just so on cue with each other. There was no question about that. And that is what really marriage, yeah. a marriage needs. And if you can't have that answer, it's much more difficult because you're trying to, you know, you, there's a cohesiveness that's maybe not there. And so yeah. that's what, that's what pe- we should be working on. And as we get older, those are the things that change, right? Mm-hmm. It's important to have sex. It's important to touch. It's important to do that. It's important, but it's also important to be emotionally attached and to have these things that bind you that are stronger than sex or stronger than physical beauty and stronger than these things. And then there's also time that you need to have spent away from each other. Yeah. Like he needs to go into the hills. If he never went into the hills, like I saw this guy at the restaurant the other day who had ALS and he was in a chair, a quadriplegic, and his wife was feeding him. And my daughter said, Mom, why does God make some people like that? And I said... You know, I guess he, everybody just has a purpose in their life and you have to, you never know why, you know? And I thought to myself, if that was Ryan in that chair, like what would my life be like? Because he wouldn't be able to hike up a mountain. He wouldn't be able to do these things. You just never know what's going to land in front of you. So yeah, there's important things and then there's not important things. But I think it's about nurturing those things. I've noticed that for and me. And your hormones will work better. If you nurture that stuff in your wife, she'll nurture you. And then. And that's one thing I would say that, you know, we my Suzanne and I have that down, you know, yeah, we good. like nurture each other well and we're buddies and all that. And, um, and, and just for the record, the sex is good, but it's not. <laughs> Just clear that up, but, I mean, just but so everybody knows. <laughs> but I'm I'm saying for real though, there there can there, but uh, I think um that certainly helps with my stress and everything. And and I've said this before, Suzanne makes me feel like I can do just about anything. Mm-hmm. Like she's like my biggest cool. fan. So I get so much confidence in who I am and what I can do because uh, she's in my life, right. you know. Um, and it's got to affect my hormones and all of these things. So, right. And here's the other um, thing, you know, she's gone through cancer treatment and she's having this poison injected to her and she's having surgeries and stuff. She don't have no libido. She don't have none of that. Mm-hmm. She's worried about just keeping alive, you know, right. just like eating food and stuff. And so naturally it's like after a woman has a baby, 
men's yeah. hormones go down. Everybody's hormones drop. Yeah. Because the last thing on your mind is that, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you're, you're no, like, true. you have this I mean, child now you have to nurture it, take care of it, get up all night. You're not sleeping. So there's things in nature that happen for a reason. And when you're going through something, she's going through something like yeah. that. Your natural, your hormones will naturally go down to meet her because it's just a stress. It's right. Naturally right. happening. So we got to look at it like that. There, there sometimes are things and I don't know. So if people want to, uh, follow you guys they can go to hunt harvest health on instagram they can go to hunt harvest health.com hunt harvest health.com yep. and the, the podcast is Facebook. yeah stitcher itunes all that and people really places. uh if you're interested in in uh, bettering your your health and there's a lot of episodes that you guys have done that i've really learned a lot from Thanks. i have to go back and listen to them multiple times because they're <laughs> pretty deep because Hill can go a little deep sometimes. She's got some stuff up in her <laughs> yeah. head. Yeah, I'm and sorry. So, I can always tell when I've gone too deep because I look over at Ryan. He's like this. <laughs> yeah, I got to use a dictionary and I got to look a few things no, up. No, I can but, tell he gets a look on his face. Talk about the like connection. I look at him and he's like, yeah, that's a little too much information. Yeah, <laughs> but I, 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 I really, I like it. Um, I think that uh, for some people it might be more advanced, but in that case, try it anyway. You know, get in there and start learning the what what these things do and what they're what the what these words mean, and because uh, it can have a profound impact on your well being f- for the rest of your life. And right. um, and Hillary, you also do don't don't you do like consulting or or yeah? So I do um, I guess lifestyle consulting, medical consulting, depending on what state you live in. You know, we can do labs, we can do Skype visits. Um, People can reach out to you. Obviously, I'm not doing primary care, and I wouldn't be doing <laughs> physical exam. Unless, of course, you lived in my area. You know, I, I have a private practice in Snohomish, Washington, north of Seattle. Snohomish? Yep. And I do have people travel from I'm all over the country I'm to from see Snohomish, me, so originally. it does happen. But, okay. um, yeah, and I... You know, I'm trying to just create content, like you said, to get yeah. out to people so that they can utilize a lot, a lot of stuff on their own. And uh, but sometimes people just need a little bit more of a push, and it's helpful sometimes for people to have a medical professional who's not just like, "Okay, I got ten minutes with you. You got this problem. All right, here, take this medication. Come back in three months." Somebody who can run the labs or can just look at your labs because a lot of people get their labs, and I've had people they get their labs every year, but they don't really go through it with them. So they send me their labs and I look at them a little bit more intense and yep. we look at numbers a little bit differently. So we would want your testosterone to be over 500 optimally. And a lot of guys, if you go to the conventional doc, it's like 450, 400, 300. They're like, Oh, you're good. Yeah. Right. But guys like I still don't. I'm surviving, feel, yeah. but I'm not thriving. You're not yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. So we can look, sometimes people have those tests and I look through it and get a different perspective. And sometimes it's just about supporting someone Yeah. and saying, you know, you can do this. Like you can take the supplement. Maybe let's try this and maybe wean off this medication. Well, the nice or, thing about Hill and you know, a lot of doctors like her is they take a lot of time with you. Right. When they look at your numbers, they go through and they look at all these different things. And it's they see the sort of thing that the healthcare system doesn't do. Exactly. You know, they, you, they got to get you in and out it. in 20 minutes. They're not they just don't. kicking you out the door to get on to the next Let's person. Let's give you this prescription. They're not writing send something you out down, the door. Take some antibiotics and we'll, we'll be done with it. They're looking at why you have an issue. Yeah. You know, your number's on the low end, like she said, or it's at the high end or in the middle. Um, you know, where that doesn't, you don't really get that from, okay. from the mainstream. Yeah. Your insurance does not pay for that. Remember, folks, your insurance pays for emergency medicine. It's great if you have a heart attack. It's great if you need your, a cast on your arm. It's great if you, I mean, I've right. had surgeries. I completely believe, but most people, when they're in need, they need lifestyle things that take more than 10 minutes to do yeah. and to work on. And so that's, if you don't want to, you don't, if you're in health insurance doesn't pay for these things, they're never going to pay for these things. Right. And at some point, if you want more guidance, you have to pay that extra money. And I, I'll actually say it's not that much money in the long term because you can get a lot done. You can get a lot more like strategic. It's like when you were talking about your wife getting the PET scan versus going through all these like, doctors, maybe mm-hmm. it's this, maybe it's that. 
you know, if they'd gone right to that, if the system wasn't so like broken suction and specialty oriented, you would be able to go right to that. And they would have said, Oh, wow, look at all that. That's not good. So it's more of going to the root cause. That's really what naturopathic medicine does is symptom based medicine doesn't help anybody. It's like taking a narcotic for pain. What happens is your pain gets better for a while, but then you need that narcotic to survive now, and it's not doing you any good. And now it's yeah. causing you great, toxic problems. Great so Glassman, that's how medicine is. The great Glassman, the founder of CrossFit, he talked about doctors and stuff. And and uh, one of the things he was saying was uh, you hire a doctor. You're, picture a doctor like a lifeguard. You're drowning in the lifeguard. You need that lifeguard to come and save you, right? It's like an emergency. Um, but you needed someone to teach you how to swim. Right. Like that would have been one of the better things. Like early on, if, if you had got some instruction. Mm -hmm. And that's not the lifeguard. That's not his role. Right. You know, go find an instructor. And I think in the medical field, you know, he equated that in similar fashion. Like when you're having in the midst of a heart attack, yeah, man. You're it's doctor glad time. that there yeah, are emergency exactly. doctors and there's you cardiologists need, and there's drugs. Right. You you're, need you're these, happy these things. That. But how much better could it have been had you had someone there years earlier teaching you how to avoid a heart attack? Right. Preventative type issues. Right. How to eat and live well. Right. And, and actually how, how to fix problems versus just mask them. Medicate them. them. Medicate right. them. Yeah. Which, I mean, man. I'm I'm all about that. I think uh, in the long run as well, it's a lot cheaper to pay for care today that makes you healthy and live well than it is to pay for diabetes and heart disease later Absolutely. and all these People other things. People will say, I don't, I don't have the money to spend on that kind of food. And I say, food is something you will do every single day of your life, most, most days yep. of your life. If you don't spend money on that, you don't value that. You're basically saying you don't value your body. Yep. Because food is literally, it is like the medicine. You know, it's it's like absolutely. That we is the we decided medicine. that a long time ago. I remember hearing even uh, Mark Sisson talks about it on Mark's Daily Apple, and, and yeah. there's all these discussions on his blog, and they're talking about shopping at the grocery store and how much money it costs, and he's like, uh how inexpensive it really is when you stack it up to diabetes medications mm -hmm. that, that, or even if your insurance covered that, the, the quality of life that declines the length of years that you lose in life. And, but mostly the quality, like by the time I, but guys, I know so many friends, buddies of mine that are 40 years old and they're done. Right. They're done. Yeah. They're, they're, tough to get it back dude they're they're yeah. so old looking and feeling it's scary and it, it's 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 way 40 should be feel so good and, yeah. well, and this is one of the things we get the most people are like how old are you yeah and we just feel like how we old look, are you hillary we feel like we look the tell same me this as we can did. i say it <laughs> yeah she's okay. 44 years old and i think she looks well, look I don't know how a forty-four-year-old <laughs> doesn't look like look. a forty-four-year-old, right? Thing, you know, like I, I just I think that I think you look say, good. Oh, thank you. I think you look great. Well, not forty. I would never have guessed you're that old. Okay. Not that that's old. Well, Ryan's forty-three. Yeah. So yeah. He's... You're a year older than me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a few months anyway. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. But I don't say it's because we're perfect. I mean, I went through like 10 years of massive stress before I even had kids, like yeah. medical school. And then I had kids later in life, which like I said, that's, that's stressful. <laughs> it's a young woman's sport. <laughs> I, get, I get it why women feel like they're old at 40. I mean, if you've had five kids before you're 40, like you spend half your life sleep deprived. <laughs> it's crazy, you know? And yeah. I get it now and I understand it. And, and wow. um, I think that, but I do think health healthy living the people that i know that are healthy that look look great mm -hmm. they may not feel great all the time i don't feel great all the time yeah but it's just it's just a choice that we made a very long time ago that we wanted to live like that and whether you're 20 or you're 40 this is what separates from the animals you have a choice yeah yeah and you, you may know, not have wanna... a choice to get cancer or to get ALS or to get these things, but you do have a choice to take care of yourself and you can make excuses and blame it on other people and say your doctor didn't do this or that. But the truth is it's really all up to you. And 
maybe you don't have the support system you need. So that's what people like me are there for is to help you like to get your wife on board with you to, you know, that's really what it's Mm -hmm. about supporting each other. So, but you can make that choice. You have that ability. I perfectly said, you know, you, it's like extreme ownership. Exactly. You've got to own it. It's it's, at the end of the day, you have the power. It's like when Susanna had cancer and we were trying to figure out what it was, we could have just went, eh, they said it's this, or it's just that. Or mm-hmm. it's, but we were like, we owned it. We're like, no, we're going to keep going after this until we figure it out. And, uh, and you know, I just look back, had we waited longer and longer or done what the medical doctors told us to do, right? Um, could reach stage three, four, you know, advanced, knows, and right. then who knows? And so I'm, I'm, uh, a firm believer in owning your and so many people. Yeah, and I, I love that about your story. Themselves. When I heard yeah. you know, the podcast and watched all that, and that was one thing that stuck out to me is uh, you didn't just kind of sit back and accept what they were telling you. You had a feeling, right? You had a feeling mm-hmm. like not quite getting exactly what y- you want to hear. It's not. It's not. It's That's not good your enough. intuition, too. And so you That's kept digging. Strong. And you did that on your own. You didn't just allow the doctors to mm-hmm. say, eh, go back and maybe come back in a month. You did the digging. You did the research. So, yeah, you owned it. And, uh, and hey, I mean, yeah, who knows where, who knows where it could be. You wouldn't have done that. If you didn't own it. Right. Yeah. And I know, uh, you know, every, there's a lot of folks out there that are having trouble pooping. Okay. Yeah, Older guys, their, folks. their sex drives are gone, yeah. you know, and, and, but it doesn't have to be that, that no. those things can be, the body's an amazing, and they, take amazing. And remember they, they change. These things change as we yeah. age and things that were once the way they were, they evolve and they change and that hopefully they're just changing for the better and it's just different. Yeah. That's all. Yep. Yeah. Well guys, thanks for coming on the podcast. I really <laughs> loved it. I've been wanting to, you know, Get Hillary on for a while oh now, and, and Ryan, of course. Well, you can see, like, but. you know, what's the saying? Like, out kicked my coverage, <laughs> obviously, right? Yeah. You know, I like to hunt, I like to get outdoors, but she's obviously the brains here. So, well, you guys are doing I've a great learned, job. I've learned a lot. From I you. I encourage everyone to go check it out. Hunt Harvest Health podcast. Uh, subscribe to it and uh, catch some of those pod those episodes. What is uh, your highest downloaded show? Do you know? Currently, it's our very first podcast where we talk about how we met and who okay. we are. And then uh, Dr. J. Tita, who talks about testosterone and things. the hunting experience. And Men that's a great podcast. No, he's yeah. great. He's a good friend of mine, too, and he's amazing. He does not hunt, but so, he is like really stoked about what we're doing. He's very, if, and he's in that whole Mark Sisson. Mm-hmm. paleo fx world kind of thing if we were to recommend a podcast in your library for yeah. someone to listen to for the first time which one would you recommend someone go check out as far as overall health gosh i would have to say we talked about digestion now i'm not even on this podcast in our podcast you mean i think doc, the one they should listen dr. to one with jillian. dr jillian super important yeah gut health. that is one i like the things. ones you guys did in follow-up to jillian's though too oh uh, the right. gut so the sure. gut restoration program mm-hmm. you can actually download that for free it's on our at huntharvesthealth.com okay slash a gut restoration i think okay it's on the podcast you can go download the guide for free Cool. And you can have the resources. There's like a supplement package that's very specific to it. If you wanted to buy it, you can. But it's got everything. And I'm actually going to be improving it and working on it. So it'll be even better. But that's all free content. And you can use that. And we we had quite a few downloads. I was kind of shocked at how many people actually downloaded that. (laughs) So that... Dude, it's I told you, useful. there's a lot of people who can't poop, Hillary. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, a lot yeah. of people with acid reflux, too. That's what Dr. Jillian yeah. talked about So a I lot, think so. that podcast, and then Jade. Jade, I just like Jade. Like like she said, yeah. he's not a hunter, but he's one of those guys that gets it. You need to take him hunting. He I obviously wants to go. I've been trying for like two years. Almost got him yeah. out last year. Um, I intend to get him out either this year or the next. That's cool. Soon, but he's just one of those guys that he doesn't oppose it. He understands it. And he's appreciative of yeah. what we do and just a super cool guy. So. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks um, for having us thanks, on, Brian. Brian. Yeah. It's Stay awesome. gritty. Okay. Stay gritty. Stay <laughs> gritty. <laughs>
<laughs> the future of public lands. All of us own them, all of us use them. Political activists are demanding us to hand over the public lands where the state's legislators could transfer and control these lands. U.S. citizens own 640 million acres of public lands, which creates 6.1 million jobs and generates $646 billion per year. States have been selling off land to pay bills for over 100 years, thus closing access to the public. 39% of original 64 million acres have been sold. The cost of land management would break most state budgets. For instance, who will pay the hundreds of millions of dollars to fight major wildfires each year? It doesn't matter how many promises are made. The financial reality is it will force states to have to sell off our public land. President Theodore Roosevelt said, we must preserve our lands for future generations, not merely to the people now alive but to the unborn people. Our duty to the whole bids us restrain an unprincipled present-day minority from wasting the heritage of these unborn generations.